Three years ago in 2012, a crack duo, one martial arts expert and surprisingly good mimic, the other a weapons specialist and professionally bearded, were sent to separate recording stations thousands of miles apart to do an 80s and 90s action commentary podcast for a crime they happily committed. Something James Spader told them about that involved an industrial drum of coconut butter hand lotion and a common household whisk. These men promptly created a passion-filled wave of action adoration that swept throughout the internet underground. Today, still wanted by Steven Seagal for making one too many jokes about his expanding gut and knitted hair, they survive as podcasters of fortune. If you love action, if no one else can help, and if you can find them, maybe you should be listening to Dr. Action and the Kick-Ass Kid commentaries. This podcast, people, explodes. Hello and welcome to Dr. Action and the Kick-Ass Kid Commentary Podcast. I am Dr. Action. And I'm the Kick-Ass Kid and I'm just uh, here to tell everybody listening that apparently repeatedly slamming your cock in a drawer, not a great idea. I just learned that recently and I wanted to pass it on to all our good listeners. It's not good. It's good. It's good for about 20 seconds and then when the pain really kicks in... yeah. The pleasure's what? gone, but the pain remains. What's weird is, is it's one of those things, the sensation is really, really good oh, like while you're doing it. But the moment you remove your cock from the drawer and the adrenaline uh, is reduced, uh, my God, the searing pain. I mean, I can't even explain it. Yeah, I mean, when I was last doing it, my wife came into me. She goes, you know, when you stop, that's going to work. So I carried it on for about an hour. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it really hurt. Uh, <laughs> it really hurt. Uh, it was just one of those by things, the big blue vein. It's one of those of things that once you start, <laughs> you really need to commit to. That's what it oh, is. Oh, you, cock, bang it, cock bangage yeah. is a full-on commitment thing, 100%. <laughs> it's a, it's a, a full-on commitment sport. Uh, mm. Once you start, and uh, believe you me, I've started. I was part of the uh, Cock Draw Bangers Club back in 1994, uh, which started in an extraordinarily exclusive club in London uh, yeah. between me and my friends Chad, Kyle, and Biff. And yeah, we, we thought we'd take on Cambridge. Right, yes, in the uh, cock slamming finals of uh, 96. But of course. <laughs> You can't beat Cambridge at anything. Yeah, they uh, had Steve Redgrave. Yes, well, Steve Redgrave, of course, he's uh, one of the world's uh, most renowned cockbangers from way back. <laughs> and, of course, they had uh, Jeff, Jeff Jefferson, who was, uh, well, he was very lucky because he, uh, he was a hermaphrodite, so he knew quite, quite well that he could repeatedly slam his cock till almost there was none of it left. It was kind of quite repulsive to look at. And uh, if uh, nothing else, he could always have uh, a good old fuck up the cunt front bottom, if you know what I'm saying. Because uh, he always had that extra organ. Uh, so he just used his cock willy-nilly. It was quite it was quite kind of uh, a gayful abandon to uh, watch what he would do with it next. Uh, he once tied it onto a cow while we were doing some cow tipping. Uh, had it run over by a combine harvester. And then there was, of course, that hilarious time he donated it to Parliament so that they could see what something poor and twatty looked like. Jeff Capes was good. He, he was in the Shrewsbury team. He was. He was in the Shrewsbury team, and he was he fantastic because he was incredibly hairy. So you could never tell if he was slamming his cock in there if it was just a pube. And pubes, oh, of course, morph. you can slam all day. Yeah. Yeah. People don't realise, right, people don't realise, but uh, my dad was uh, at college uh, with Tony Hart back in the 60s. And by God, Tony Hart could slam cock for Britain. I tell you what, he was one yeah, of the greatest... Yeah, shame he never took part in the cock-banging contest, it's, but he definitely could bang cock. He could, yes, he really could. Uh, in fact, I remember one time when uh, we were abroad uh, in Bern, uh, in Switzerland, and, uh, well, he set fire to his pubes while cock-banging, and I have to say... Uh, it was a real burn that night, if you know what I mean. Uh, and uh, quite a few milkmaids came out the next day to, uh, you know, help him out, apply some salve, and uh, wank him off. Yeah. That's Tony where the Hart. idea for Morph's grey friend came from. Yeah. Uh, Morph, obviously, everyone knows, came from a turdy took in 1964 uh, after he tripped balls on some mushrooms outside of a, uh, 
animals concert. Uh, so that's how he got Morph. But the uh, grey spunk coloured uh, friend that Morph had, uh, Uncle Spurf, I believe his name was originally, uh, he came from that night in Bern, Switzerland, where quite literally some milkmaids got round in a circle and gave him the old tug of war, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the irony being, of course, that Switzerland is neutral. The fuck? <laughs> I wonder if, because uh, obviously Tony Art, the campus man, campus straight man ever, I wonder how he uh, went about hiding the poppers from his wife. Uh, up his ass, probably. Probably. He probably had a secret pocket stitched in I've there. I've heard it was vacuous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so how have you been, sir? How have you been? All good. Yeah, everything's everything's going the way it should be? Oh, yes. All right. And uh, I would apologize to people listening uh, about our long absence from doing the show. Uh, but the show's free and we both have lives. So uh, if anyone was complaining, which I don't think they were, but if anyone was complaining, uh, go fuck yourselves. That's the <laughs> message I'm sending out. <laughs> it's been a long absence for the show. But the whole point of the show is that when we have time, we'll do it. When we don't, we don't. Um, but uh, the doc and I are still very much in love. And, oh, uh, oh, never yeah, doubt that. Never doubt that. And uh, how is our adopted uh, porpoise, Alan? Well, I've had him this past month, yeah. and uh, he's missing you. Yeah. He's missing you. But uh, we've been watching some um, some uh, Dancing on Ice. Oh, yeah, he likes that. He, he likes that. Like that. I fucking hate it. Yeah. But he likes it. He and, likes uh, it because he's a big, big fan of people who people didn't know were celebrities. That's what he's a really big fan of. Like, when people come on and they go, tonight we've got, you know, uh, Cheesemaker Donald Smidge or something. And he's like, I never knew Cheesemaker Donald Smidge was a, was a celebrity. And then Alan, who's our porpoise, he only kind of communicates in kind of clicks and whistles, but I've been able to interpret. Uh, and uh, he, he said, no, no, he was on the, the fourth series for two episodes of Iron Chef. So I was like, oh, well, that makes that makes sense then. That's why he's, he's on Celebrity Dancing on Ice. He knows um, all the Big Brother contestants. He knows he knows all the Big Brother contestants that got, like, thrown out after three days. He knows all the really obscure ones, you know what I mean? Um, that's, that's what Alan... Look, Alan likes what Alan likes, and you can't... Like, anyone who has children... You know, you can't twist their arms. They're going to like things that you don't like. You know what I mean? You're going to try and force their taste on them. Look, I sat Alan down uh, in a pool of my own spunk because that's really what he likes. He doesn't like to be hosed down normally. Like say, like he likes what he likes. He does. He likes it. And, and he's, he said to me in clicks and, and, and uh, 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 pings and tweets and stuff, little light noises, he said that what he really wants, he wants a more sort of viscous substance to bathe in. Uh, he's like, water's all very well, and it helps me to breathe and everything, but, but really, uh, I just want uh, uh, the spunk. So it took me about, uh, I don't know, three weeks to fill that tub up. And i tell you what, by the time I put the last drop in, the or, well, the original, the original lot that I'd started three weeks, pre- pretty pungent at that point, was beginning to smell pretty foul. Uh, but Alan seemed to enjoy it. Anyway, we put that on, and um, yeah, he loves watching all those obscure documentaries and history programs and things like that that aren't real history. Like yeah. he, he loved it when uh, the History Channel covers UFOs that have never been confirmed. He loves it when the History Channel covers religious things. Is it? And a, but loves a, loves a conspiracy theory. As he well. does. He really loves all that. He loves it when a, a, he loves it, especially when something like MTV which is like music television, he loves it when they don't play music and instead put on some insufferable program featuring people with hairstyles banging their heads together in a dirty kitchen in Iowa. He loves that. He fucking eats that shit up. You should see him flapping and clapping like a little happy Twat. fish. But he's all good. He's all good. I'm sending him back next month. Oh, well, great, this, yeah. This month. Yeah, I'm having the uh, barrel upholstered that he yeah. lives in when he's here. So, uh, thanks for that. That's all right. So, I'm sending him over with a couple of dirty DVDs for you. Oh, great. Have you got that one uh, mackerel fucking in the Algarve? Have you got that one? <laughs> with Cindy Crawford? <laughs> yeah, I've got that one. <laughs> he That's loves what? that. We like to watch that together. And then he, he touches my pee-pee with his flipper. And I have to say, it's uh, quite arousing. I yeah. know technically, because he's my our adopted son, that that's sort of incestual. But... Uh, 
you know, come on, it's 2015. If it works, it works. It... <laughs> It's 2015, and I personally feel that by this point, if I want my uh, illegitimate adopted porpus child to masturbate me while I'm watching Cindy Crawford shove mackerel up a cunt, I think that should be. <laughs> hey, if Woody Allen can do it. <laughs> if Roman Polanski can get away with it in, in 1968. <laughs> Then, uh, then quite honestly, we should all be allowed to go. That's what I feel. Mm. So, <laughs> what action films have you seen recently? What have you seen in the cinema lately, man? At the cinema, I, I went to see uh, Mission Impossible 5, oh, The good. Nation. Yeah, saw that too. And I saw yeah. Ant-Man as well. Was I saw Ant-Man. Ant-Man was a uh, fun, forgettable fluff. It was, wasn't it? I mean, what I felt like was I thought it was, of all these sort of um, origin stories... Of all the, like, origin stories, I thought it was the most kind of quick, to the point, establishes your thing. You establish old Ant-Man with Michael Douglas, uh, and then you establish new Ant-Man with Paul Rudd. And I thought it was, like, fairly amusing, fairly fun, but like you say, fairly forgettable. Mm. But I'm I'm all for him joining the next strain of the Avengers. That sounds good to me. Oh, yeah, definitely. When I say forgettable, I don't mean it in a derogatory way. I'm just meaning... If you ask me now about it, yeah, I, can. I can't really remember much about it, but I remember enjoying it. My, my main problem, my main problem was that there was no scene uh, in which Michael Douglas wore a V-neck sweater and nothing else. Yeah, and his buttocks flapping around <laughs> in ants. Yeah. <laughs> he went into a disco and uh, <laughs> went down on some ants. There was no scene of him licking an ant's asshole. While wearing a V-neck sweater, and I thought, honestly, I thought they missed a trick. Oh, so I if, think they did. If Marvel's was... listening, they should really, for the sequel, I want a uh, ant anal lickage <laughs> with Michael Douglas in a V-neck sweater. I've paid my money. Give me the goods, Marvel. You fucks. Yeah, because he was like the first. Uh, it was the proto James Spader, wasn't it? He? he was always involved in filth. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, he went through that period, didn't he? Of uh, fatal attraction and uh, basic instinct, basic instinct, and then disclosure. Disclosure, yeah. Disclosure is my favourite one because it's uh, it's that old story of how you know men really, really don't want like a big titted, incredibly <laughs> attractive, powerful woman rubbing on them too much. They want it a little bit. They want it up to a point. I like... want it up to a point. <laughs> before it comes to sexual harassment. <laughs> but then at a certain point. After I've already munched on a chuff <laughs> and she's already given me a damn fine handy, at that point I want to I want to be able to walk away and I want that to be accepted. Free. <laughs> I want that to be accepted. <laughs> listen, listen, Demi. I've licked you out. You can be an angel. But Let's I'm just starting talk. to feel a little bit guilty now. Yeah. Because any more, yeah. your lips would go anywhere near my todge. Yeah. That's cheating. Yeah, well, they, they, they do, don't they, in the movie? Doesn't she give him a bit of a bit of head as well? I can't remember. It's ages since I've seen it. Yeah, I don't remember. All I remember is that he looks in the mirror, he throws down on the thing, looks in the mirror, he's about to have sex with her, and he's like, no, I can't do it. And it's probably because he looks in the mirror and he goes, Dad? Uh, <laughs> 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 suddenly realises he looks more like Kirk Douglas than Michael yeah. Douglas and went, yeah, it's getting a bit old for this. It's like when Roger Moore was in a View to a Kill and he went... Yeah, it's, you know, they're, they're having difficulty finding women who, who don't look like my daughter. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that's what I felt about, about Disclosure. But it, mm. was, it was a classic of the modern age, really. I mean, the CGI work in it alone is, is worth the revisit. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a lot like Mononc. <laughs> it is. It's almost like the digital upgrade of Mononc. That's kind of what I feel like it is. Uh, so, oh, so skin trade. Yeah, that's good. I covered that on the old uh, the old diner. But yeah, that's, I, that's good. That. I uh, thought you would. I thought you would. I I liked. I loved the fights. Obviously, I'm not an idiot. I love the fucking fights. Uh, I just thought like I always think with Tony Jaa because he set such a precedent mm. that he yeah. could do more in terms of like the stunts and stuff. And I understand on a lower budget thing, he's like, fuck that, there's no insurance and blah, 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 blah. But I want to say, listen, I don't pay to see one of your movies, Tony, so you can jump around like a happy 
happy Fucking little fucker. happy clappy fucker. Uh, I pay you to do death defying stunts, and uh, and and so you better do it. And he yeah. didn't do it. Uh, he, he did a little bit, but but not as much. But I thought Dolph was excellent. I thought Dolph was really fun, and uh, I thought that along with the package, it's probably been my favourite straight to video Dolph movie in a long time. Oh, definitely mine. Definitely mine. I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. Uh, I mean, else? Peter Weller in the hospital at the beginning and the police station at the beginning. That was fucking... I just... All I wanted was Peter Weller to show up at the end of the movie with a machine gun and take everybody out. Yeah, it could have been more Weller. It could uh, have been a lot more Weller. A lot more Weller, Weller, Weller. Weller. Oof! But the, Which is uh, what Weller says every time before he ejaculates in his wife. Yeah, true, it's true. true. Absolute true story. I've, I've, I've seen the videos. I've bared witness to it. <laughs> uh, the, the everybody brings the you know everybody's nobody's treating it as a B rate uh, action movie. They're no. all acting quite well in it. They're all giving it the beans, and that's what I quite liked about it. Michael J. Mm. White, of course, awesome mm. work, awesome work, and uh, yeah, what a great films definitely suggest fans of Doctor Action and the uh, Kick Ass Kid checking that shit out. Yep, and uh, Mission Impossible. That's one guy who doesn't give a fuck about insurance. It's Tom Cruise. Yeah, indeed. Uh, I, I mean, the only problem I had with Mission Impossible 5 is I really wish they hadn't fucking spoiled 90% of the action sequences in the trailers. I mean, I, I did tell myself at the beginning of the year that movies like that that I'd be going to see anyway, I wouldn't watch the trailer of. But yeah. unfortunately, when you go to the cinema as much as I do, and I've started going at least once a week with Jim for the show... Um, you end up seeing trailers whether you kind of want to or not. Uh, I've definitely not been looking at stuff online as much as I, I used to because that was really pissing me off. But um, the uh, trailers uh, on the cinema screen, you can't really avoid them, you know what I mean? And uh, so it was just such a shame that I'd seen, like, the plane thing and the bike chase and a lot of the other cool shit that happens in the movie uh, prior to the movie. That was my only feeling. Apart from that, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a bit of a throwback to the first one. I thought it had more of a, like... Espionage. Yeah, uh, my, I went with turning. my uncle and Molly, and my uncle turned around at the end and said, "I didn't want that to finish. I fucking loved it." And I'm, with, I was with him. I yeah. really enjoyed it. Well, I feel like, like with a Fast and Furious franchise, every movie they've like out tried to outdone themselves with the most ridiculous stunts possible. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. going to be interesting in the next one because I pre- presume they just all become nuclear powered superheroes that can chew through buildings and shit bullets I have no idea but I presume that's what happens because at the end of Fast and Furious 7 the Stath and Vin Diesel are fighting on a car park as it collapses and in they both space. in space yeah <laughs> and they both walk away you know scratch free and uh, and broken bone free. So I mean, I, we're pre- and there's never a mark on Vin Diesel's uh, uh, vest, a uh, wife beater vest. So yeah, I presume that they're just indestructible in the next thing. And uh, although Helen Mirren is apparently the eighth one, and they've expanded Kurt Russell's role. So honestly, as far as I'm concerned, the next Fast and Furious movie they announced, my erection. Just wait. Is Helen Mirren, Mirren he- in it? Helen Mirren's going to be in it, and they're expanding Kurt Russell's role. That's the last thing so I heard about. So Helen Mirren's got to be playing. Jason She's playing Space Mum. How about that? How is that true? Fucking, but it's got to be true. I've read it, and it's got to be true. Nice. I just, I, I'm already hard for that movie. You won't get a sex scene there, will you? I'm already like, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, I don't know what. I don't know. I really don't know who the big brains is behind it. But whatever they're doing, just never, ever, ever, ever stop. I want Fast and Furious twenty, twenty five, forty. I mean, just never, ever ever stop it's amazing but beyond that anyway Mission Impossible uh, instead of saying like well how do we top the fact that I ran around the tallest building in the world like you know I'm some kind of pixie um, the what they did was is they did the plane thing at the very beginning sort of a throwback to the second one where the big dangerous stunt is at the very beginning and then um from then on, we're going to tell more of just a straight kind of espionage story. I was surprised, like, how much sort of talking and plot and design and style there was in it. I mean, obviously, it's Christopher McQuarrie who did Reacher and also did Usual Suspects and did uh, a bunch of other things. Uh, he wrote Valkyrie, the one that Cruz was in about the um, about the Nazis, right? Yeah, yeah, Trying yeah. to kill Hitler. He um, also did a good film called Way of the Gun. He did. Yeah, he did a very good film called Way of the Gun. 
uh, with Ryan, where is he now, Philippi? Um, and uh, I can only assume that... Um, He's on TV. It, Reese Witherspoon, uh, I can only assume that it's something in their divorce proceedings she wrote in there, like, can never star in an A-list movie again. Um, yeah, I watched a really far-fetched film with her in the other day. No, I didn't. I watched, I watched it ages ago, but it was on TV called yeah. This Means War. Yeah. Far-fetched. Two blokes fighting over Reese Witherspoon. Yeah, that's never going to happen, What a load of bollocks. Yeah. It's fuck, never happened. Fuck those people. Two people, like, taking shits over Reese Witherspoon while she's lying under a glass table uh, masturbating with a, an oddly-shaped uh, root vegetable. Yes. But two men uh, fighting over her, no. Um, two men sword fighting in her mouth against her will while she's strapped to the end of a runaway train, uh, yes. That's what well, that has happened. Right. That has happened. But two, two men fighting over her because they think she's attractive or lovable, no, never no, happened. No. Um, she looks like the devil from Legend. Yeah, she does a bit. As if the devil from Legend had been panel beaten. Um, by a rap artist. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, Mission Impossible, yeah, throwback, lots of talking, but when the action happens, it's awesome. Uh, it is awesome. Bike chase, tremendous. Knife fight, tremendous. Airplane sequence, impressive. Yeah. I see, the thing is, I think they've got to show that in the trailer because that's what they've sort of gone on, the fact that it's all real. It's real. The CGI, that's Tom Cruise on a plane. Yeah. Obviously, Fil- he's got filmed over, on, but filmed still over England. Awesome. Huh? Filmed over England. Yes. Also, yes. a harness can only hold you so much. Like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's still fucking amazing. <laughs> he's still on a plane as it flew around. And it's not like once they got the shot, he could go, all right, then. Once he got the shot, the plane had to circle around and land with him still on. Eight takes. And they did that eight times. It's still fucking amazing. It is. It is fucking amazing. And to kind of throw it away at the beginning of the movie was a bit odd. But, I mean, it is what it is. I, I think it's good. Because all the way through the film, you're not thinking, I bet that plane bit's coming up soon. True, but then I wouldn't have shown any of it in the uh, uh, trailer. And if I had shown any of it in the trailer, it would have been the smallest of glimpses. Hmm. I'd have probably just shown the plane about to take off. Right. So people, so people have been like, yeah, but it won't take off. Because I don't remember if him running about on the outside of the building was in the trailer of the fifth, fourth one. I think it might have just been an overhead shot of him over it. I think. Right. I can't remember. But, uh, yeah, he's clearly not got a problem with heights. <laughs> Although, imagine, imagine if you did that, right? You're Tom Cruise and you're doing that stunt. And you get halfway through the stunt and the plane's taken off and he's like, he shits himself and <laughs> throws up at the same time. Could you imagine that? And they got it on film. Him just going, <laughs> just like from both ends. There's a huge trail of like brown shit out the back of his pants and just oh, you mean, you mean like the camera. Oh, you mean if I was to do it? Right. <laughs> Well, if I was to do it, I would pass out. I mean, that's it. You strap me to the outside of a plane, I would have a panic attack, and I would pass just, out. All you, all you do is you, they'd be like, "Can we? Uh, can we cancel out the noise of the legs hitting the side of the plane because he can't control himself because he's just completely passed out?" Yeah. Literally. I mean, I don't even like being inside planes, so yeah. I, They've got to do it. They've got somebody's got to do a picture now of William Shatner at the plane of yeah, the Twilight Zone episode, right? With Tom Cruise's head and in, in the window. Yeah, that'd be funny. It's got to be done. Get on that. <laughs> Get on that internet. Why haven't you done that already? How dare you not have that ready for me right now? Should you uh, watch anything else? Uh, Terminator Genesis, but we'll talk about that during. Did you see Terminator Genesis? No. No, don't no. think you did. No, I'll wait for video. Uh, uh, Jurassic World. I think we talked about that, did we? Oh, see, I've seen Jurassic World, yeah. I liked how they made it all about the dinosaurs, because Chris Pratt's yeah. awful. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Uh, split second, uh, I watched that again with Rutger Hauer. Have you heard, Hauer? right, how they want to do a new Ghostbusters? They don't do the all-female one, but they want to do another male Ghostbusters. Like, oh. Uh, like, any of it matters anymore. I mean, talk about shitting all over a legacy. But 
if they do the new one, they want to do it with Channing Tatum and Chris Pratt. I'm like, oh, fuck. Have we got to watch these fucking assholes in every single movie from now on till the end of fucking time, these two? I, I don't mind, but... Uh, oh. I like both of them, but the problem is... I, I don't like Channing like Tatum in, like, Magic Mike or whatever, because that's just not for me. Right. Because uh, well, you in... like actual gay porn. You, you don't like the way Magic Mike teases it. Yeah, you I don't like, like, yeah. Stop teasing my cock. I want to see cocks in assholes all the way up. Yeah. And swallow it. Yeah. Don't do it all over his back. No. Nobody appreciates that. No. Um, Take the shitty dick in your mouth and <laughs> like it. Uh, but they're getting a bit too overexposed now. I just don't like Pratt as a hero because he's not like I didn't like him in Guardians and I didn't like him in Jurassic World. He's he's fine as the simple schlub that he played on um, Park the Parks and Rec. and Rec, but like he's not he's not a hero. Now, if he was playing um, like a dumb shit who got embroiled in uh, action, that would work. But him playing the guy who knows everything about the dinosaurs, I'm like, I don't believe this guy knows how to spell his name without sticking his tongue out while he's writing. You know what I mean? See, now that's why I said before, and even though I'm opposed to it greatly, he would be a perfect Jack Burton in a remake of Big, Big Trouble in Little China. Yes, he, he would. Yes, he would. That's a very good point. Yes, he would. I still don't want a remake, but yes, he would. Oh, I don't. I completely don't want to remake, but he would be perfect as that character. But it's uh, just... It, yeah, it's one of those things. It's like when they announced the Suspiria remake. It's not that I love Suspiria so much. It's just that how and why do you remake that movie? Like, the whole reason Big Trouble Little China is the way it is, and the whole reason a movie like Suspiria is the way it is, or, like, the re- reason any of these movies from, like, the 80s are what they are, is because of the directors and the crew and the cast and shit they had at the time. It's not because we all watched them and went, oh, what a fantastic story. It was just, like, you put those people together and you got a certain product. You can't then go, well, we're going to remake it, but we're going to have this person and this person and directed by this and blah, 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 blah. It's like, well... Then it's not that, you know what I mean? Then tell some other story. Then call it, you know, Big Trouble in Little Italy or something. Like, do something different. Oh, I'd love to see that. Yeah, but with Kurt Russell and John Carpenter. Yeah. The sad thing is, is I don't think we're ever going to get another John Carpenter film. I think we're done. I think he's never going to direct anything again. I think that's the saddest thing. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Uh, and if he does, it'll be like the war. But then again, when it'll you hear him like... talk, it doesn't sound like he's that bothered. Oh, no, he, d- he doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't give a fuck. Because he's, like, sort of said, oh, I don't care as long as I get paid for... Uh... As long as I get paid for Big Children in Little China, they can do whatever they want. Yeah. And it's like... <sighs> he's had that attitude to everything, though. When they asked about Halloween and everything, he was just like... This is I, bought, I bought the uh, video of his wedding. And said I was going to remake it. And he says, do what you want as long as I get paid. Yeah, it's true. And I've got some fucking great talent involved. In the remake of John Carpenter's Wedding? Yeah, I've got, um... I've got Francis Ford Coppola to direct. Right. I've got, uh... I've brought, uh... David Mumhay on to write the script. Nice. Uh, uh... In the role of John Carpenter. Now, this is a weird choice. Right. I've got... John Goodman. Nice. I like it. You've got yeah. left field, but it's good. Is he going to be wearing a wig and a moustache, or is he just going to be John Goodman and, and we're just to believe John Carpenter? Just, cause of just, the way to, he plays just it. to believe it. Just, just to, believe to believe it. it. Just the way and he this, plays this, it. He's going to nail gone, it so well without the Yeah, I've gone completely it. left field. Right, for with the, the wife. choice of the wife. Glory Honeyford. Oh, wow. I was going to say Steve Buscemi, but I think, I think with Gloria Honeyford, what you're getting. Well, Steve Buscemi, I've nailed him on to play. And I've took a, took a bit of artistic le- liberty. The fetus. Yes. Ha- Steve Buscemi is playing Howard Hawks. Wow. John Carpenter's favourite director. <laughs> and he's going to be playing the preacher. Right. I don't think it really happened. I call that art- artistic... Artistic licence. Artistic licence. Yeah. I it's, like the it, way you've got Linda Florentino uh, as uh, the person who mucks out the pigs in the sequence where... They go back to the farm, and uh, someone needs to muck out the pigs. And you've got Linda Fiorentino. 
Who, she she took a bit of convincing. Well, it's because nobody wants to work with her, least of no, all no, her. She, 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 she hates she, working with herself. That's how bad she is. She, well, when I went to meet her, she was sticking she was sticking a fork in her hand because she hated herself so much. Yeah, because you went to her, I remember you telling me about this, and you went to her and you said, Linda, I'd love you in this scene. And she was like, who am I going to be acting with? And you'd be like, oh, no, no, you're just by yourself. She's like, I can't do it. I can't stand myself. Yeah. I'm I've so heard, shitty I've to work with. I've heard she's a bit of a cunt to work with. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, so I've heard as well. Yeah. Yeah. But I need her for the role. Yeah. And uh, there's one thing you can say about me. Yeah. Like a challenge. You're persistent. I'm very persistent. You're very persistent. I Ask thought the woman that, I'm stalking. Yeah. I thought that hang gliding in through her uh, bedroom window at night, uh, wearing nothing but a chef's hat over your old todger, that, I thought that was uh, a I particularly that, nice yeah. touch. Yeah, I thought that I'd uh, nail it for me. It to g- Give her the role, but she, uh, she just called the police. Yeah. <laughs> I think the fact that you had a courgette poking out of your ass, I think that probably <laughs> that probably took points off it. I think I think you probably I think just I probably went a bit too far. I think you over the pudding there, mate. I would have just gone with the chef's out over the cock and been done with it. Yeah. I think the, the yeah. courgette up the ass, you're just asking for trouble. Well, the policeman said that as well. Yeah, it's funny because uh, Fern Britain did a section on that on uh, this morning. Back when yeah, she, she did. That. She yeah. did, yeah. With Luke a course, with a course up your ass, you're looking for trouble. The Fern Britain story. <laughs> <laughs> well, enough, I've also got the rights to that. What, do we make it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've not got Francis Ford Coppola because he's go, busy with the go, uh, Now, John listen Carpenter here. Win. I've had a fantastic idea. Instead of a courgette, it's going to be <laughs> a turnip. I'm going full fucking turnip on this one. <laughs> She's gonna have a marrow in her ass. She gotta have the marrow right up the way. A fucking marrow. <laughs> Hoo ha! <laughs> Which director was that? <laughs> Al Pacino as. Oh, she oh, got a I'm marrow. <laughs> She's got a marrow of that great ass. Wow. Al, <laughs> what you've done there is you've stuck a marrow <laughs> right up. <laughs> right up that girl's ass. That's impressive. The most I've ever had up my ass is a snap pee <laughs> after a salad debacle I was part of at one of... Jimmy Woods' uh, salad day barbecue things. Listen, that is no woman with a marrow up her ass. That's me, Michael Bloody Kane. I'm playing the lady in this remake who gets a marrow up her ass. Because really, I need the money, and I want the money and marrows up my ass. I need a new pair of glasses. So I'll stick that marrow up my ass. Right up my fucking ass! <laughs> It's been up there now for five days. I said to yeah. the director, when are I'm we shooting... I'm going method with this role. When are we shooting this bloody scene because my arsehole is split from Wednesday <laughs> to Friday? You could park a fucking Volkswagen up my colon at this point. Yeah. I have a fissure. Yeah. Uh, so, other things that have been going on. Uh, I went down to uh, Coney Island uh, where they filmed The Warriors... Excellent. I bought myself a sweet, sweet warrior's top. I mean, when you see this shit... Can I sell them? Yeah, when it gets a bit colder, when you see this, because it's long sleeve, when you see this sweet warrior's top, man. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's a... It's a I'm, not, I'm not kidding. It's, it's top draw warrior's top. Just has the warriors along the front and then the, the like, uh, uh, so wing right. symbol on the back, you know? Nice. It's very cool with, like, grey sleeves and a, and a white front. Uh, which I really liked, and uh, I went on the cyclone while I was down there, which is the oldest roller coaster. Um, that's fucking hairy. I can tell you that much. That is fucking hairy, and it's not because it like goes so high or it whips over, or it goes upside down or anything like that. It's just it's so, so fucking old, dude. There's huge sections of the track missing. missing. I'm not even kidding. And uh, no, there really is. Like we looked up at it, and we were like, there are big holes in that fucking track. But not only that, it just you know how like you get on a roller coaster now? Was Tom Cruise onto the side? Yeah, he was. He was actually. Um, weirdly enough, naked from the waist down. 
<laughs> interesting, interesting choice. Um, but uh, no, that was hairy because it rattles so much. Because yeah, it just rattles and shakes and fucking... It, so you just constantly felt like you were either going to be flung from the car or the whole thing was going to come crashing down. So that was fun. I did that. And um, I adopted a small Korean boy uh, while I was there. Well, <laughs> I say adopted. Stole was probably Oops. more accurate. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, I keep him around. He does, he does odd, odd chores, odd bits here and there. And before people think, like, you know... I'm using him for, for child slavery. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, nothing could be further from the truth. Um, you know, I, I give him a few grains of rice every day. Uh, I pay him in blowjobs. You know, I, I really... <laughs> uh, oh, by the way, I don't give him, I don't give him the blowjobs. I, I have a rat, a little pet rat that he's, uh, he sticks his little Korean pee-pee in. He loves it, though. He seems very, very happy. Uh, his name's uh, Pai Tang, I think... He just keeps screaming it, so it might it might be his name or it might be Korean for help help get me out of this strange whitey's room. I don't know. Yeah, get off. Yeah, get off. Might be, um, but he he listen. He's he's really improved the place. Uh, all the dishes are now done. He really ties the room together. He does. He's, he cleans up a treat. Uh, smells a bit, so I have to hang him outside my window every night. <laughs> Uh, in a in a little cage, but I think he loves that because he loves the sky and the moon. Reminds him of home. Yeah, but you don't want to leave him in your apartment when you're out working anyway, because you you got to have a bit of trust with these. Well, yeah, not only that, but they eat everything. I mean, oh. he will eat everything. Uh, he went through my entire collection of Last of Summer wine DVDs before I realised that. Little cunt, did yeah. you? I hope you gave him fifty lashes. Uh, no, I made him watch the On the Buses movie. That was wow. uh, that seemed like punishment enough. Did he learn? No. Twat. So I hung him outside the window again and uh, <laughs> showered him with sick. So it was a fun trip to Coney Island, though. I mean, really, you know, you want to come back with a souvenir, Sweet Warriors T-shirt, and a small Korean boy that you may or may not have stolen from a hot dog vendor. Well, if he was just outside, right? That's what I always say. Listen, possession is nine tenths of the law. That's what I said when the coppers pulled me over. I've never understood what that means, but. <laughs> Nine tenths. There we go. Possession. Yeah, you get pulled over. He says, "Listen, you've got a lot of heroin on you." I say, "Yeah, yeah, it's mine. It is. Possession is nine tenths of the law. It is." And here so I am enacting nine tenths of it. Yeah, and they went, "You're right. I'm sorry." Fair enough. Can it's I buy funny, some heroin? It's funny how many people don't know that, and the police get away with arresting them. Because really, <laughs> if you get arrested for almost anything, you just go nine tenths of the law, and they go, "Oh yeah, fuck." <laughs> That's all you do. If you're found over the body of several young <laughs> murdered girls. Is this your knife you used to stab them? Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. And they're it's your my, knife. They're Nine my girls. The law. How Good they, point. Yeah. How are they how are they your girls? Well they've got my <laughs> semen all over them. <laughs> In uh, Victorian times, my good friend. <laughs> That's how we like I own them. Yes. Have you not seen what dogs do when they piss on everything? I'm the same when I come on <laughs> corpses of things that I've just killed. So it's mine. So I it's mine. I believe. I've, I've, <laughs> I've labelled this mine. Uh, true story. <laughs> true story. So have you got any other stories to tell us, dude? Uh, no. No. Shall we watch The Terminator, then? The Terminator! Let's watch The Terminator. It's going to be difficult because I'm watching it on Blu-ray, which means I can't watch it on my computer, which means I have to just... Uh, I'm watching it on bl Blu-ray as well. I just have to press play on the machine. I am on six seconds, and the uh, metro Goldwyn mayor lion is just roared its last. Let me just get to... Uh... Do you know that's why that dentist had to be taken out to Africa to shoot a lion for real? Because every yeah. time one of his kids put on a Metro Goldwyn Mayer movie, he kept shooting the television. They went through twenty televisions before he realised that. <laughs> Mine's just started to fade down the Metro Goldwyn Mayer, and it's just roared its last one. You ready? Yeah. Is it? Oh, I'll just wait. Three, two, one, go. All right, so with the start of the Orion logo, one of the most iconic roles played by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, I, I played the Terminator in 1984. That's a great movie. It's made by uh, James Cameron. 
uh, who was uh, good at the time. Yeah, he had a beard. Yeah, and uh, after this, of course, he would go a bit crazy and uh, make a movie called Titanic, which was shit. After um, True Lies, he really he jumped the shark, didn't and he? And he would double down. At... See, Los the funny Angeles. thing is, that says Los Angeles 2029 20, AD. It was actually just filmed down the road for me, where I am right now. Yeah? Yeah, that's how the Bronx used to look in the 80s. Yes, yes. Spaceships flying all around. Right. People often think that's an optical effect. It isn't. No, it's it not. It isn't at all. That's how, uh, that's how everyone used to roll in the Bronx. Back that's in rolling. The day, rolling along. Now, these special effects, of course, were done uh, by... People don't know this, but they were done by uh, mentally simple children. Uh, okay. Who were like... They, were, they had that thing where they, they knew exactly how to do special effects, but they couldn't do anything else. Well, couldn't, could they? What's that thing? Is that What is that? It's like Asperger's or whatever. They had yeah. that thing. Uh, Asperger's is... Uh... That's when you've shoved several beef patties up your ass, right? And two pieces of Lego. Two pieces of Lego, right. What, what do the Lego do, then? The Lego? Yeah. Oh, no, you'd have to ask them. OK. So uh, here we see the, uh, the title sequence. And you don't really get this very much in movies anymore, like these kind of, like, fancy title sequences. No, you don't. No. Michael Bean? No relation. Linda Hamilton? I've met her. I've had her. Lance Henriksen, I've had him as well. He's had me. Yeah. He's had everybody. <laughs> Paul Winfield, of course, from the Wrath of Khan. Yeah, I'm sorry, Ken. I, I try. I love Paul Winfield. He's a, he's a good guy. I think. Mark Goldblatt, of course. Uh, he got arrested a couple of years after this for uh, <laughs> trafficking heroin, uh, which he had in the severed heads of young boys. That is true. That is true. It's on his IMDb page. thing is, it was very successful for several years. No one batted an eyelid at a man coming through uh, Los Angeles Terminal with a bag full of severed boys' heads. That was much more common back then. It was just years later when uh, some heroin rolled out. He was right up shit creek then. Well, he, there's no tax. You can't, can't work a way to put any tax on it, can no. they, you see? Derek Gibson and uh, Gail Ann Hurd. Gail Ann Hurd, now she's of course famous now for The Walking Dead. And, James uh, Cameron, very, oh. very in, uh, famous for finding Cameroon. Yeah. <laughs> in his little underwater. Yeah. yeah. By Christ, I found Cameroon. I found Cameroon. I shall call it James Cameroon. <laughs> I like the way this is a symbolic. Today's technology intertwining with future technology. Yeah, it is symbolic. Another word for that is bollocks. Yeah. Symbol bollocks. Yeah, this is my favourite bloke that, in the whole film. That guy is also in Action Jackson, isn't he? I think so, yeah. He's a little guy talks like this. Yeah. <laughs> I got in my head. I used to be a blues guitarist. <laughs> And a boxing promoter. He looks like a boxing promoter who became a blues guitarist. Yeah. Who then became an actor. That's what he looks like. Mean Gene Willie Nelson. Yeah. Mean Gene Blind Jeff McHaddock. There he is. Now, yeah. rumour has it that when Arnold was the governator years later, he would reenact this sequence every Friday night up at... Uh, <laughs> Griffith Park Observatory and just wander around butt ass naked yeah the only reason he rang is because that the black guy was very scared of male buttocks <laughs> well he had uh, he had been in uh, prison <laughs> I know what that means the funny thing is, is when I tried to reenact the scene myself when I was up in L.A., they, uh, they asked me to put some clothes on and almost arrested me. Actually, when I was here, they told me to strip to recreate it. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to. I want to play the Bill Buxton role. Yeah. That is some fucking good hair he's got, though, isn't it? Well, that's how Paxton used to wear his hair back yeah. in the day. Weird, uh, weird Brian Thompson there. Yeah, who has also been in Cobra, of course. Yeah. 
You can just see that the, what I like about the Blu-ray is you can really <laughs> see <on> his penis. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I imagine it, on an old grainy VHS that wouldn't be as. Uh... <laughs> you really saw it flapping about then. Was, you know what? HD is good in some ways. It is. It, it is. <laughs> I'd always wanted to see what his cock looked like, and there I have it. Look, Brian Thompson's really looking at it. Eh? Also, why is it that Bill Paxton's had his face run over by a car? I don't know. I don't know. Also, when you think about it, right, back in the day when you were a punk or whatever these kids are meant to be, right? Back in the day, think of all the work Paxton had to do before he went out in the evening. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's not very punk rock, really, is it? You know what I mean? It is. Mum, I'll be down in a minute. I'm just putting blue streaks across (laughs) my sticky up hair. (laughs) And then I've got to meticulously paint tire treads on my face. It's all part of my look, Mum. Yeah, fuck the system. (laughs) Have you got any more Max Factor? <laughs> Fuck the system. Have you got any more L'Oreal hair dye? I won't conform to your society. <laughs> <laughs> Naked people falling out of the sky all over the place. I tell you what, if being gay was a big thing back then, if there was like gay pride that there was back then, they would have loved it. What, naked guys falling from oh, the sky? Yeah. Oh my god! They would have loved it. It's amazing. raining men! Yeah, that's where the song comes from. Yeah. Oh, that's where James Cameron got the idea. Who can tell what came first? Chicken or egg, innit? Yeah. James Cameron. Now, we don't see Bean's cock. No, uh, we don't. I, I reckon it's probably because it's larger than Arnie's. Yeah. Um, I, really, I think wanna... it's probably. I think. I don't think Michael Bean had it. I think uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger had. Uh, Michael Bean, no, no cock claws. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, if you it's bigger than mine, don't show it. You don't see Linda Hamilton's cock either. So no, she's notoriously got a very big dick. Yeah. He's put piss stained pants on. <laughs> he stole the hobo's clothes. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the police are after him. They're like, don't. He's he wearing stole tights. my pants. Yeah, look, he's wearing tights. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was hoping that when he stole the hobo's clothes that we'd see the hobo's cock. Yeah, it's a film about cock. Yeah. Paul Winfield was like, I'll get mine out if you like. He was like, no, that's all right, Paul. No, no, look. You want to see my cock. Now, I, I'll say one good thing about uh, Terminator Genesis. It re- recreates all this. But Michael Bean's in it, is he? No, he's not, sadly. It's that Jai Courtney. He's oh. fat shit. He's the only. He's the. He's the one thing about it that I really didn't like. Why didn't they get Bean back? Well, they said about getting Bean back, and Rowan Atkinson turned up on set. Oh no! Really? Yeah. Oh. Not that Bean. <laughs> I bet they fucking stink. Those trousers. But he likes that. For yeah, the future, all, t- all trousers are hobo pants. In fact, hobos are revered as being the provider of all clothes. Yeah. Also, look, he's just broken into this department store. You'd think he'd, he'd steal the hobo some new pants. I, I probably... First thing I'd do is go and look for some stain... Either stain remover or new pants. I'd just steal the steal new trousers from this place. I'd yeah. go for a nice pair of checked golfing ones, probably. See, if, they have, so if this was Roger Moore in the role, in a minute, it would just cut to the front of the store and how he'd walk in a tuxedo. Right. And he'd do the cufflinks and go, that feels better. And there'd be Time three... Time to go and get the fucking Terminator. There'd be three women behind him with their minges open, plopping babies out. Yeah. yeah. Are you going to find uh, Sarah Connor? And fuck her. <laughs> the future depends on to do a boy. I do like those trainers that he wears. See, I think it would have been much better if it was John Connor came back and fucked his own mum. Like, like uh, Back to the Future. Yeah, only real. Like, proper hardcore. <laughs> and Linda Hamilton being like, Oh, it's so wrong, but it feels so right. 
do it in my arms. <laughs> it's not really incest if you don't come in me. Uh. <laughs> That's terrible. Uh, uh, my mum said the same thing to me. Yeah, I know, right? My <laughs> too. So I did go back and find some stuff that people had said about uh, Terminator back when we announced we were going to do it originally in 2013. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just going to try and find that. I don't know where I put it. Here we go. Back in the day. So, uh, Jason Blanco said, rewatched before, rewatched Night Before Last, still killer. In my meager opinion, James Cameron made one great, towering, visionary film, The Terminator, and another interesting one, The Abyss, and that's it. Doc, discuss. Uh, Aliens is awesome. I love Aliens. Uh, Terminator 2 is amazing. And I also really, really, really love True Lies. Do you know Avatar that and Linda, Titanic Ham Pop Linda Pop. Hamilton did two movies with Jim Belushi and even appeared in Jim Belushi's TV show, According to Jim. Did you, was she ever uh, going out with him? I don't know. Nice buns. Yeah. I feel like that burger guy is holding those burgers like they're meant to be tits. Yeah, do you like my burger tits? <laughs> When I look at that, it looks like tats. Nice, big, juicy bugger tatties. <laughs> I love it. I, like it. I love it how he looks like he's posing from catalog. Yeah. Like, look at I, that jacket. I also stole hobo clothes. <laughs> I don't believe for a second that that guy we stole it from was the same size as him. Well, no, because isn't, uh, isn't that why they picked Thompson? Yeah, but it wasn't Thompson that he nicked him off. It was the other guy. Oh, it was Paxton? No, it was the other guy. We don't even know who he is. Oh, yeah. No, he should have nicked it off Thompson, because at least Thompson has the same kind of, like, jaw and facial structure. the same fucking jaw. Yeah, they both look equally as crazy. Now, back in the day, would you with Hamilton? I don't think I would have done, to be honest. Um... Uh, no. Uh, to me, she uh, sort of feels uh, a bit like, like, how is it that Spielberg with what's her name from uh, Kate, Capshaw. Kate Capshaw, and then how is it Cameron with her? Just the hair alone would have put me off. Yeah, but back then, there was no other sort of... Hair. That was the yeah. only sort of hair. He just put ice cream right on a minge. Come on, yeah. have cold, have cold minge. You've got a cold cam. <laughs> She's like, but I didn't <laughs> Jason want... Statham, a kid. Yeah. She didn't want, like... This is the best, best is cameo, awesome. best cameo that he's done. But it's your, uh, it's your uh... Dickie Miller. Yeah, old Dick Miller, the Robert De Niro of cameos. Mm. Met him. Mm -hmm. Now what was he like? Yeah, grumpy old fucker, but nice, <laughs> authentic. You know what I mean? Yeah, hot old school Hollywood. <laughs> oh yeah, well old school New York, I think. Yeah. Just what you see. Though. He's a really good actor, considering, right? I'd love to have seen him in a lead role. He was in that middle. Well, he was in a lead role in some of Corman stuff. Was he? Yeah, he's a lead role in Buckets of Blood or whatever that's called. The one where he plays like a hipster poet who um, wants to be a sculptor or something and uh, he ends Gitch. up. Well, he gets shot, shot by Arnie, yeah, while he's trying... <laughs> no, he, um, he's, a, he's a hipster who's trying to make uh, uh, what are they, statues, and he's huh? not very good at it. So one night he, like, kills a cat by accident, and he covers that in clay, and then he's like, ooh, and then he starts, like, killing people and covering them in clay and stuff. Oh, he's a biopic. Yeah. Of, uh, of um, Sheer LaBeouf. Yeah, that's the type of shit he'd do. Yeah, it is. Um, so then Sit. Philip O'Neill said uh, the Uzi 9mm 
and he said, and I said Cameron was a much better map painter than he was a director. Oh, controversial. <laughs> And Philip O'Neill said, you think his films like Terminator 1 and 2 are badly directed? I said, Terminator 1, you're going to laugh at me for this, but Terminator 1 is not particularly well directed or well edited. It's very good for the budget. The idea is interesting, the effects are great, but well directed. No, imagine any other director of the era with the same cast and material, and it's a better movie. I still love it, and it's iconic, but I never liked Cameron as a director. Even Aliens isn't as interestingly or dynamically directed as it could be. As he goes on with stuff like T2 and True Lies, etc., he definitely improves, and they have more to them in terms of polish and visual ideas. But he's a special effects guy through and through, not a filmmaker. He's like a proto-Hack Snyder, but with original ideas. To which Philip said, I disagree about the editing. I, I, like I say, I, like, I do like James Cameron, and you're right. He, he does have some good ideas. Oh, yeah, some great ideas. Now, I would kill her as well. She's just a... Well, yeah, I would, just for the hair. Yeah. Um, why, why do you, well, you know, have some common sense. She's not going to have a kid called John Connor. Look at her. Now, how is it that we never saw these two in a three-way? That's what I really wanted to What, know. these two and Arnold? Yeah, or Michael Bean. Because Michael Bean didn't really want the other woman. He wanted her on the TV. Now, she's... she Yeah, now, the, her on the TV, she's not a real newsreader. She she was actually... Uh, a page boy. ...being held against her will by the producers and forced to be in the movie as part of a sick, twisted game that they like to play. After that, they uh, tied her up over a kid's paddling pool and forced her to shit herself on camera. <laughs> People don't know, but Hollywood used to be a much different place. Stuff like that was... Uh, yeah, it was a better place. It was more honest. It was allowed. Yeah. You know, nowadays, you know, you can get in trouble for doing stuff like that. Back in the day... Yeah, not years ago. It's how you got parts. You had to work for it. Yeah. Even when you didn't want them. Because she didn't want to even be in the movies. She wasn't even an actress. She was an accountant. Yeah. Um, so then Jason Blanco went on to say, I disagree about the original being badly directed. There's some fantastic imagery there. Uh, well composed, though I imagine this being more due to even than quite experienced cinematographer Adam Greenberg. Agree on all the rest, especially that last sentence. Let's also not forget he's a writer and producer of films other than those he's directed. More importantly, he was married to Catherine Bigelow, a genuinely gifted director, in my opinion. Uh, Which did point I, break, so... And I yes. said, again, Near Dark and Strange Days were the best thing Bigelow ever did, in my opinion. I think Cameron used to be pretty good at writing and certainly with ideas. I think he loses that ability before Titanic, though. Grant I think Titanic was this turning point with Cameron. I think he really did. It, everything went to his head. The fact, you know, because now he could walk into any studio in Hollywood and say, give me $200 million and I'll make something pretentious and shit. And they'll just give it to him. You don't have to work for it now. Isn't he meant to be making Avatar 2, 3, 4, Who the 5, fuck wants Avatar six? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7? Nobody. I mean, I imagine, like, at the... At, like, is there anyone who still remembers Avatar? The like, only reason I remember Avatar is because I genuinely think it's some of the best 3D I've ever seen. That's it. The first scene of it in 3D, I was like, that is pretty amazing. The film's dog shit. I just don't think anyone's talking about it. Like, if it, Avatar 2 came out tomorrow, would anyone really give a shit? No, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's, that's it. Nobody goes, oh, fucking yeah, Avatar 2. We need to see that. Avatar 2. Go on, Avatar. Avatar did. Um, Grant Nock, who has become a, a regular over at the group. Uh, yeah, well, he's, he loves this show. He apparently. says, The Terminator is still my favourite film of his then Aliens, then T2, although there are a couple of parts of T2 I struggle with. Only seen The Abyss once, can hardly remember a thing about it. Might be time for a rematch. I think he means rewatch. Yeah, um, I think he probably means rematch, as in yeah. it, uh, Might it be time defeated. to fight The Abyss! Yeah. He wants to take on Ed Harris and uh, Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonio. Yeah. Whatever happened to her? She uh, She's now working in an old people's home in uh, Croydon. Nice. Nice. Yeah. But she's not working as in, like, as a nurse or whatever. She's uh, pleasuring she's them, right? With a, She has, like, a little anal, anal vibrator or something? 
She sticks that up on her ass and then she goes round to everybody. And be it if it's a woman, she just flicks the clit at the right. old people. Nice. And, uh, well, you the... don't even have to take their clothes off for that. It dangles somewhere around their thigh. Yeah, it's, it's sometimes on like their ankle bone. Yeah. And uh, the old boy, she just tickles the nuts with a feather boa. It's really a public service when you think about it. Well, yeah, some of them remember as well. I saw you in the abyss. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> A couple of them remember her from... Uh, but when they Robin say Hood. that, and they're that old, they mean, like, in the abyss of time and space that drifts through their head. That's what they mean. Mm. Yeah, apparently when they die, it's the first thing that flashes before their eyes is Mary Elizabeth Manstrantagnio. Yeah. Masturbating a, an elk. <laughs> <laughs> it's the last thing I want to see before I die. Yeah, me too. In fact, if I don't not, see it in not. my lifetime, I'll consider my life wasted. Yeah. Just the same as I'd quite like to see uh, George Jetson fucking into Hamilton with his nose. I'd quite like to see this guy who's on screen right now. Yeah. Just I'd like to see him and just say, yeah. what were you thinking with that cut-off T-shirt? Yeah. This woman annoys the shit out of me. Yeah. Who wears Walkman like that? Back in the day, you had to because they didn't have any real music. Yeah. Like, they didn't have any real, like, they didn't have hi fi systems or anything. There he is, Paul Winfield, make this coffee. Yeah, he's thinking, two years ago, Lance, I had worms crawling in my ears. Stop talking about Star Trek 2, but this was the highlight of my career. Now he's thinking, how is it everyone else gets to be naked and I don't? <laughs> All I want to do is be naked. I beg James Cameron to let me be naked. Pim Win- Paul Pill, Paul Winfield, is one of the great naked actors. actors. Of Hollywood. He's but one of the Paul great was... naked actors of Hollywood. Well, he was, but he never got the chance to really shine. Right. But I tell it's... you what, like it was funny because I saw him in two performances uh, back in the early nineties. Um, one as King Lear, and uh, one as Othello. Yeah. And uh, the King Lear he did fully clothed, because yeah. it was like a matinee for kids. The Othello he did completely naked. I tell you what, the Othello was 50 times better. Yeah. When it's he just, looks good naked. When he's, in ha- when he's unencumbered by clothes, he really pulls out all the stops. It's quite incredible. Mm. I saw him on the... Uh, it's this very special edition of the Blu-ray. Yeah. He screen tested for the part Sharon Stone played in Basic Instinct. Nice. And his audition was the uh, interrogation scene. Oh, yeah. Uh, Paul, Win- Paul Winfield un- uh, crossed his legs and yeah. let every, you know, <laughs> Paul Verhoeven really See got a close balls. up of his dick. Uh huh. And, uh, and they w- didn't go with him because Sharon Stone had a bigger dick. But, uh, now, what it is was- it about this fucking um, salamander thing? She's looking after it for Robert Dobby. Can you still get those and have them as pets? Is that still allowed? I don't know. That's a good question. I want you one know. of those as a pet. Yeah, I do. Uh, I'd use it as a piss dispenser. Yeah. Shoved it up his arse. I'd use that little flap of skin under, <laughs> under its chin to get me off. I just want to tell everyone who's listening, I'm eating a uh, Buffalo Bob's meat stick. Any good? And it's uh, kangaroo meat. Is it kangaroo meat? Kangaroo meat. Buffalo Bob's kangaroo meat. Is it nice? It's all right. I've never tried kangaroo. Yeah, well, it's, uh, yeah, it's sort of bouncy. I had a lion bar the other week. Yeah. Yeah, I got it off some, off some dentist in America. That's a joke. Off some Wisconsin dentist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Craig Everett Earl then says, Aliens is in my top ten faves and one of the very few films I would have given a ten to, but props for bringing up Strange Days. It doesn't get brought up enough, and one of the reasons I thought Angela Bassett should have been cast as Storm in X-Men over Halle Berry. Yes. And I yeah, said, that. Angela Bassett was the next Pam Greer and so fucking awesome, but just like Pam never really got her due, I loves me some Angela Bassett in Strange Days. Yeah, I've not seen that for years. I've got to re-watch that. 
And Philip O'Neill said uh, Angela Bassett turned down X-Men because the superhero genre wasn't big back then and actors didn't take the genre seriously. But now superhero movies are all the rage in Hollywood. Everyone wants to be in superhero movies now, so she's showed up in Green Lantern. Okay. More for all there. And Craig said, I wasn't aware that she turned it down. That's a lot of paychecks she missed out on. Oh, well, she'll always have Stella um, got her groove back. Jason Blagger says, love her in anything. She consistently deserves better, but her presence raises even shit like Vampire in Brooklyn to watchable. And then Matt Payne said, let's not forget that this was actually Cameron's first film, although he won't admit to it since he only directed half of it. He was canned by the producer, and he is, of course, talking to, uh, talking about Piranha 2. Yes. Yeah, that wasn't... Uh, I've never seen it, but... Uh... I think that's pretty despicable, leaving a walking on while he's fucking up. That's the only way you can have sex with some women, though, because they do not shut up. You just know that if they if he took that off, he should die, because it says, breathe in, breathe out. Yeah. <laughs> it's a CD of famous faked orgasms throughout the ages. <laughs> Paul Winfield's on it. <laughs> oh, my Lord. It's actually Paul Winfield doing impressions of people... Doing famous faked orgasms throughout the ages. Weirdly enough, if you get the video that comes along with it, it's just that guy's face on it. Yeah. That guy from the TV, that guy there. I like that guy, the bartender. He's, he's the uh, sexiest man, 1984. Yeah. They were lucky to get him. Look at him. What a hulk. <laughs> Well, of course, our ideas about beauty have changed a lot in the last 35 <laughs> years. Do you think in 1984, do you think people went into this and it was like, they were like, oh, Linda Hamilton? Yeah, probably. They liked the big hair back then. Yeah, because, I mean, her hair is exactly like the Beast's hair in Beauty and the Beast that she was in. Yeah. His hair was exactly yeah. like that, wasn't it? It was, yeah, feathered like that, yeah. Well, they originally cast her as the Beast... It's just she, she didn't realise. She just showed up. They cast uh, uh, Ron Perlman as the beauty. <laughs> First time level. Yeah. Imagine if they'd have put some latex on his face for that role. No, they put latex on her face for the role. <laughs> oh, yeah. He looks a creepy pair after me. Yeah. That's weird. She walks out of a bar and it says dry as ice cream. I like Michael Bean. I think he's a great actor. So do I. He never got his due, though, really. This was, like, his biggest role, really, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Actually, somebody's put a question on the uh, first book about it. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? <laughs> Let's have a look, right. Aaron Carruthers. I'm going to meet Michael Bean at a Collector Mania event in a few weeks. Looking forward to it. What kind of question should I ask him? Ask him if he still has the Rain Mac and if he that uses it occasionally to go out and flash people. I, yeah, I'd ask that. I'd also ask, did those hobo pants smell? And, and is putting your naked flesh into piss-stained pants weirdly arousing? Yeah. Does it does it feel as good as it looks? Yeah. I'd also ask if he's been cast in the new Aliens movie. And has his cock ever been cast for a dildo? Hmm. That is a very good question. Yeah. Did he really stick it in Linda Hamilton? And is this a documentary? <laughs> so I've booked my tickets to come back to the US, dude. No, back to the US, back to the UK. OK, when you come in? Uh, end of October, beginning of November. Excellent. How are you here for? Uh, well, two weeks. Two weeks? 
But the first week, hopefully, I'll be coming up and seeing you in Leicester, dude. That's the plan. Me and me and uh, Amy. Amy's going to drive me up, hopefully. Yeah, okay. Um, and uh, we'll come see you in Leicester, just to do a bit of a road trip. Excellent. That'll be good. Just let me know the dates, and I shall make sure I'm off work. Well, yeah, we'll probably just come up for the for like the evening or the, the morning or something like that. We'll figure something out. Yeah, cool. green thing this is my worst nightmare what being that guy no oh what ruining your lamp yeah that is terrible no it's it's drumming my salary (laughs) fucking her yeah yeah Pretty amazing when he shoots it, though, isn't it? Yeah. Only Who if has kept sex this and then eats a sandwich that big? I mean, I'm not disrespecting it. I'm quite impressed, but... <laughs> you shouldn't eat so late at night. No, you shouldn't. So fuck earlier, people. That's what I'm saying. Fuck <sighs> in the afternoon. i tell you what, though. It's difficult to find the right woman who we, you can, you know, once you've pumped a load into. Yeah. And then she goes, I'll go and make you a fucking sandwich. Make you a fucking sandwich, right. In fact, that's that's my opening thing. When I go speed dating, <laughs> that's like my opening line. <laughs> Would you make me a sandwich? Now, you see, the thing is, it is it is, it is no, amazing. No, I don't, I, don't ask, I don't ask that. I say... I say, after I've pumped my load up in you, <laughs> would you make me a sandwich? <laughs> and she, she goes, uh, depends if you ask me on a date. You go, no, we've still got a minute. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, we've got another question, didn't we? Didn't we get another question about... Uh, about uh, Techno broke, broke, from Grant broke. Knock. Yeah, what about it? He asked what our favourite nightclub scenes were or something in action movies. Um, probably Lethal Weapon 1. Lethal Weapon 1. Uh, for me, nightclub scenes, John Wick. Oh, I also really like Vanity in, um, uh, um, uh, you know... Uh, action Jackson. Action Jackson. I also really like the nightclub scene in Collateral. Uh, I really like the nightclub scene in Showgirls. Never seen it. <laughs> I've seen bits of it. I've seen the swimming pool scene. Oh, everybody's seen the swimming pool scene. That's what first made me think about getting Alan the porpoise. <laughs> <laughs> this is a pretty damn good nightclub scene as well. It's not a bad nightclub scene. What about that nightclub scene we did in that other... What was that movie we did with Cynthia Rothrock, Guardian Angel? With all the different coloured drinks? Oh, yes. Yeah, there was all there was all the colours of the rainbow. Oh, he's got one of those um, skeleton tees. Remember, like, he wears in Spinal Tap? Yeah. That was him. Yeah, you broke my fingers, all 11 of them. I can't play my guitars now. Yeah, that guy behind him. Do you think this was a real nightclub? Yeah. Yeah? It's still open. Is it? Yeah, I bet it is. I bet it's some hipster place now. Yeah, Probably all dressed the same way. It's incredible yeah. how they all managed to dance in slow motion. He's already like walked past that guy with the bald head and the glasses. The funny thing about Linda Hamilton is that she was uh, just pipped at the post to be the MGM lion. (laughs) That was what was incredible about her. She's fit, isn't she? Oh, yeah. With the pigtails. Yeah, not as as fit. That's Paul Rudd, wasn't it? Yep. I think it was Paul Rudd, his first role. No, it was Rule Pud, which is... uh, (laughs) 
They often get mistaken. <laughs> Look at the tables. They're not even proper tables. Nah. Western style. It's quite in love with weaponry, this movie, isn't it? Yes. It's a Republican's wet dream. I'd hate to be in a Republican's wet dream. I have been, on a, by all accounts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just, you'd have to watch Donald Trump fuck someone. Yeah. See, now, the thing is with watching Terminator now, is as amazing as it is, and it's still a great action sci-fi classic, imagine going into it in 1984 not knowing anything about it. Right. You know, when you've not got all the trailers playing every fucking where. You'd have been like, why has he gone up after being shot with that gun three times? Right, you wouldn't know, would you? No. But it was based on which famous sci-fi western? Westworld. Yes, indeed. Played by the wonderful bald actor Yul Brynner. Yeah, that is a classic film. Yeah. In fact, I'd say it's a perfect double feature with this film. His head, Yul Brynner's head, used to double um, double actors' um, Racker Welch's cleavage. It did, it did. It was also... It, the football was based on his head. Leicester started the season today with a 4-2 win. Excellent. That's not the football team, that's just a guy you know called Leicester, right? Yes, Leicester Piggott. Yeah. And I was just watching an advert the other day that used that exact graphic, or a different, not, but used that idea that the, the guy in the advert was a robot. Yeah? Yeah. And this it's... starts what is, you know, a very long and substantial car chase. Takes up, you know, at least a third of the film. Well, this film could actually just be called Chase. So it's nothing but chasing. Right. And he was dead. I mean, this, this, is, this film, I remember my dad showing I want to there. see your titties. <laughs> I've seen the maid's titties. Now let me see yours. I, I love tits. That's what he went for. He went right for the bosoms. Yeah. It's just he's not he's not trying to kill her. He's just a filthy perv. Yeah. Look at that. Shaved his eyebrows for the role to make himself look a bit more scary. I'm going to say it worked. Is that true? Yeah. Look, he's got no eyebrows. That's what makes him look so weird. And he was terrifying. It was one of the first films my dad showed me and it terrified me beyond all consciousness and thought. Beyond all consciousness, time and reason. Time stood still as I, when I was a young man, grabbed my penis and tucked it and said, Daddy, I'm so scared of the Terminator. <laughs> Daddy, I'm scared of my own body. Yes. Why have I got a pubic hair on my bollock sack? Oh, wait, it's my penis. Daddy, why do my balls bounce around so much? <laughs> and does it make me a bad man that I put them in the dog's mouth a lot? <laughs> While inserting my thumb up my bottom. Is it wrong? I painted my chest with gooseberry jam and I won't <laughs> apologise for it. <laughs> Daddy, look at me. <laughs> Daddy, look at me. It's gooseberry, Daddy, your favourite flavour. Don't tell me you're not tempted. <laughs> Daddy, it's not wrong as long as you don't come in me. I heard a fella say on the TV... <laughs> That is, that is one way to really freak your parents out, isn't it? Yeah. You went into and went, you know you can stick it in there. It's really <laughs> not coming, me. It's not illegal. 
I don't mean all the way in. It's just a tip. I mean, we don't want to go full fuck. No. <laughs> Down. Suck my cock while you're at it. Yeah, this is how you're gonna get pregnant. Swallow it. And then spit it back up your fallopian tubes. Of course, he was a virgin, wasn't he? In the story, he's like, he's never done it with anyone. Betty knob John, Con John Connor, though. Yeah, I bet. Not knowing it was his son. Which, of course, doesn't really make any sense. What, that he didn't know it was his son? No, that John Connor is his son. Why? Well, because if time is a line, if time is linear, right? Yeah. He's come back from the future, fucks her, then she has John Connor and he grows up to be John Connor, right? Yeah. But time's linear so the original timeline before he comes back from the future she doesn't have any children or if she does so how would he do you know what I mean yeah yeah I do know what you mean I've never thought about it like that that's a good point it's some shit <laughs> now of course it, it's just in order it, for him to make the decision to go back in time John Connor has to exist but John Connor can only exist if he goes back in time. That's yeah. the problem with it. John Connor only exists after he's gone back in time, right? But in order for him to go back in time, John Connor has to exist. That's the problem with the whole thing. Yeah. I suppose it, the only... The, it would be great is if, if you saw John Connor, he's also gone back in time and he's looking at a picture of himself and his brother and his sister and they're disappearing. Yeah. And he's trying to play Johnny Be Good up on stage. Yeah. Meanwhile, his mum is trying to fuck him. And... Yeah, Michael Bean goes, turns around and decks Arnold Schwarzenegger. And then turns around and goes, Are you okay? <laughs> I'm just saying the whole thing doesn't work. No, it don't. Do you know what I mean? I do know what you mean. I wish people would say the same thing about my cock. What? <laughs> what the whole Absolute... thing doesn't work? <laughs> no, no, the no. whole thing doesn't work. Scrap it and go back yeah. again. Get a new one. Know what he says. It's a filthy disgrace of a penis. <laughs> know what he says. It can't be bargained with, it can't be reasoned with, and it absolutely will not stop until you are dead. Yeah. Told you. No eyebrows, look. Weird. But they've got to be... See, I don't think he shaved them for the role because his, his eyebrows look so covered up with makeup. It could be, uh, it could be uh, like, a little bit latex. Yeah, I think they covered it up. I don't think he shaved them. He said that he shaved them, lying bastard. No. Because you can see that there's different colours. It's like, And it's like a big ridge. He's got, like... I, mean, I don't think you have like big fucking pronounced eyebrow ridges. I mean, maybe he does. Maybe his eyebrow ridges are all roided up because he was yeah. sucking roids through his eyebrow holes. I've no idea. Yeah, maybe. He's a... No, I weight train as well. Is Arnie Welsh now? Is he? He is. Yeah. <laughs> Come from the valleys. <laughs> like some give cheese give on me your clothes and cheese on toast. And cheese on toast, please. <laughs> Sing some of that old Tom Jones. <laughs> <laughs> it's not unusual to be fucked by Arnie. <laughs> not unusual for me to pump your ass. <laughs> but if I see you hanging around in the laundry, I will fuck you. It's not unusual you, you have to see me cry. To see me cry all over your face. And tits. Did you see Spy with Jason Statham? I did, yes. Is it any good? 
Yes, but not for Jason Statham, unfortunately. I mean, he's all right in it, but it's it's good for other reasons. Oh, okay. So it's worth watching when it comes out then. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really know what's happening with old Stath. He said that he'll do a fourth uh, Expendables. He said that he'll do eight Fast and Furious. But the Mechanic Resurrection's been put back. Has it? Yeah, it's been put back again. So when? Like this time next year. Like rather than early next year. It's going to be like this time next year, I think. And he ain't got any other movies he's working on. Well, he's working on the uh, Layer Cake sequel, isn't he? Oh, he's still working on that. His company's optioned the book, yeah. He's probably just going to do franchises from now on. Just make the money that way. Viva la madness. Yeah. He's, he's producing that as well. I like to believe that this entire film is really a ploy of Michael Bean and Arnie to, to fuck Linda Hamilton. I reckon they're sat around in the future, right? <laughs> and Michael Bean has said to Arnie, look, I'm pissed off with there being no women with big 80s feathered lion-like manes around here. They've all got, like, shaved, cropped head or, or like, little little pixie hairdos, and I, I don't want any of it. I want a big lion-maned 80s woman. And I was like, yeah, I like it. I like to hold the hair when I'm fucking them. And Michael's like, yeah, okay, all right, honey, whatever. But listen, how about we devise this scheme whereby we'll just pick a name out of the hat, it doesn't matter, We'll go back in time. We'll tell her some cockamamie bullshit thing. And uh, and you put us in jeopardy. Like, never really kill us, but just, like, threaten to kill us and kill other people. Yeah, I, I can do that. And then uh, I'll fuck her in a, under a bridge in a, or a hotel room or whatever. Uh, do I get sloppy seconds? Sure, you can fuck her whenever you like later. Oh, yeah, okay. I reckon that's it. I reckon the whole movie is just a ploy for them to come back and bang Linda Hamilton. Yeah, it'd be great at the end if they high five and went, it worked. Yeah. George Peppard walks along and just goes, I love it when our plan comes together. End credits. That's what James Cameron's original pitch was. Yeah. It was an A-team episode about people who come <laughs> back from the past in order to fuck a moderately unattractive feathered-haired lady. How much cocaine do you think everyone was on making this movie? Uh, do you think Arnie was, or do you think he was just content with the steroids? I think Arnie was probably huffing, huffing roids for most of the movie, but I would imagine cocaine was flying about the set. It wasn't a big deal then, because back in the 80s it wasn't addictive, was it? No. And it was the good shit. It was done more like speed. Yeah. What, you couldn't do it under 50 miles an hour? Yeah. And you had to do it off Sandra Bullock's tits. Yeah, well, I've had that. That's the only way I like to do coke. Straight off the nips. Nips. Arnie, of course, after doing Total Recall, would never be content with a two-titted lady again. <laughs> and he spent the rest of his life and his vast fortune looking for the all-elusive three-titted lady. Yeah, and they told him on set, you know, it's not real. Yeah. That's a fake one in the middle. Yeah. And he was like, no. He used to make Yul Brenner sit between Maria Shriver's tits. <laughs> So it looked like she had three tits. <laughs> you throw a nipple on the back of your head. <laughs> that, that, that probably hurt a bit, that would. What's hilarious is uh, he's able to make 80s L.A., Look as dystopian and run down as the future, really, in a way. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. It's kind See. of a commentary 
on what was going <laughs> on in America in the 80s. It's also saying, get your act together, sort your fucking life out. Your yeah. bedroom's all messy, America. You've left cum-stained socks on the floor and bowls of three-day-old cereal congealing in the corner. Grow the fuck up. Get some hair on your nuts. Yeah. Go out and get a fucking job. Yeah, look at the state of you, America. Look at you. Look. Let yourself go. <laughs> you may be in your teenage years, America, but you need to get out of bed, take a long, hard look at your face, put some cocking clothes on and work for a living. <laughs> this... Times have moved off from the old west, America. You can't lie about anymore, touching your pee-pee and eating cheese-flavoured snacks. They still haven't listened. No. <laughs> it's funny, Obama made that exact speech the other day. Yeah. It's just nobody listens to his speeches anymore. Yeah. I want to live in a world... Where we grow the fuck up. Now listen here, America. You can't lie around all the time touching your cock <laughs> and eating cheesy base snacks. Yeah, your cock or your vagina. At on some PC. point, you have to get up, get out, and get a job. <laughs> And touch your cock on your own time. Yeah, don't do it on my time. Don't do it at work. It's filthy. Well, do it at work, but don't make it so fucking obvious. And don't ask me beforehand. <laughs> don't come up and say, excuse me, President, can I go touch myself in the bathroom? Just go do it. I don't want to know about it. This, this is fucking good effect, isn't it? This is it is, yeah. Nah, I just cut my arm open. Yeah. I imagine this is really what it's like if you're Arnie. The funny thing is, in this movie, he obviously plays an indestructible robot. But in other movies at the time, where he's meant to be a human, he plays it much the same way. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? It is a good year. Uh, I'd invite to, I, if I could go back now in time, I'd go to the opening day of this in the cinema, get myself ready for it, and when he does that, I'd like to stand up and go, He's a cocking robot! <laughs> I would actually like to go back. You see that cop in the pink shirt? Yeah. I'd like to take him out for some muffins. Yeah. And coffee. Yeah, take him out for a bagel. <laughs> uh, pay no attention to my lazy eye. <laughs> I will take you out for bagels and we will yeah, make don't sweet Don't look at love. the lazy eye, look at the bagel. Forrest Whitaker is Bagel Hunter <laughs> in the new Luke Besson produced film. Lazy Eye Bagel Hunter. Scoff at Michael Bean, telling you about his his future. There's no more T-shirt, more eighties than that T-shirt that Michael Bean's wearing, is there? With the high sleeves. Oh, it's my favourite. I've got three myself. I've got three of them. Oh, he's going to do something nasty with his eye. He was fucking huge, though. Wasn't he? He's still huge now, but what if... His fucking arms! This is how I cut my eye out. Yeah? Yeah. There's a bit more blood than that. I 
I bet that quite hurt, you know. What's interesting is, you know that um, the ugly uh, bollock-faced man, Michael Pollard? Yeah. Yeah, he was originally meant to be in this role. <laughs> They're very brave to do complete animatronics on Arnie's whole face. See, there. every so I've seen some people say, "Oh, you know, you know, looking at it now, it don't look great." But then it looked fucking amazing. It looked amazing now. Oh, I think it still looks fucking good. What they don't realise is that's also an animatronic. Arnold Schwarzenegger weren't even in it. No, they just paid him for the likeness rights. Yeah. It would be amazing if we found out that Arnold Schwarzenegger wasn't actually real all along. He was just an animatronic created by Stan Winston. So Linda Hamilton's hair is definitely an animatronic. That guy on the left with the receding hairline and the green check shirt? Yeah. 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 Animatronic. Yeah. No, he's not receding hairline. That's just, he's just got a very unfortunate hairline. <laughs> it's always been like that. Since he was a baby. Yeah. It, you've got, it, it's interesting, isn't it? Because, like, a lot of people go, well, I can never be an actor because, you know, I'm not handsome enough and I'm not this, I'm not that. And it's like, and you look at it and you go, that guy's an actor. That guy's yeah. in the Terminator. Like he he's, went he's into in Terminator a, too. He went into a room and convinced people to put him in front of a camera. Daniel Craig's really not good looking. No. That guy behind her, him there, eating his glasses, not good looking. I was in a movie recently. Yes, I saw. I filmed a cameo for one of the greatest action movies to ever be made. Commando? It's going to be called Slingshot Cops. And I star in it as Willie John, the illegal fireworks dealer. <laughs> When's that going to be? Uh, are they putting it up on YouTube again? or? No, it'll be released on DVD probably early next year sometime. Cool. My plan is, while I live in America, to cameo in as many movies as possible. That's my plan. Uh, will you get an IMDb page for this? Uh, yes, there will be an IMDb page for it, yes. Excellent. But yeah, that's my plan. I want to cameo in every single independent movie that's being made between now and the end of time. I also want to travel uh, to as many states as possible next year. That's the other plan. Very cool. Uh, I'm also going to release between now and next year five or six albums all about horror people, and then I'm going to be selling them in March next year at Horror Realm in Pittsburgh. That's a, a busy schedule. Mm-hmm. But that's the plan. My plan is to star in Avatar 2. That would be good. You yeah. should be in Avatar 2. Well, I'd be any fucking good thing about Avatar 2. I'm going to play the tail of one of those alien blue creatures. And Eric. The only way I would appear in Avatar 2 is if I could have a sex scene with one of the cats. Yeah. And then if, when I spoofed little, like, globules... It was in, like, an anti-gravity planet or something, so the little globules of my spoof would, like, float about in 3D at the audience and splash them in the face. Yeah, and you know what? James Cameron could get away with that. He could do it. He could do it. If any filmmaker on the face of the planet can put my spunk on the face of the public, it's him. 
Now, this and Maniac Cop 2, two of the great police shootouts of all time, right? This is, this is, this is awesome. I love this. Because he does look cool as fuck. There's so much death and destruction in this movie. Stay here. I'm going to hide in the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> you stay here in full view of the Terminator. I'm going to go in here and take all my clothes off. I work so much better naked. It's just masturbating. <laughs> Don't kill me. I've already had a worm in my ear. <laughs> Be great. When he walks in, he just put. He, uh, what's it? Shoots himself with a phaser gun again. It's a callback to Carl. Oh, the guy with the pink shirt's getting restless. Yeah. Henriksen, he's on the case. Henriksen was originally supposed to play the Terminator, wasn't he? Was he? Yeah. And Arnold Schwarzenegger was supposed to play Kyle Reese. Like, and Arnold Schwarzenegger was meant to play Sarah Connor. <laughs> yeah, yeah Sarah I put Connor. on a dress and the feathery hair. I shaved my eyebrows for the role. You, you don't need to, Arnie. No, I'll do it. I've already <laughs> done it. Oh, now we've got to draw your eyebrows. I don't back want on. to get typecast in Hollywood. And, I'd love, uh, I'd love to Hamilton. get like people say that I don't want to get typecast. I'd love to get typecast. Imagine just showing up and all you had to do was what you'd done before and yeah. they pay you. So it's a dollars. fucking cool right yeah, you know, cool role. I don't want to get typecast like uh uh what's his name is uh paedophile or something. Yeah, or, uh, who are you? you know, oh, I'm always the male rape victim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that, that, that. <laughs> Every movie I'm in I've been penetrated anally. By someone much bigger than me. Yeah. But being typecast is like the Terminator or something. I'd be like, yep, that suits me down to the ground. Why, you scream Terminator, mate, if I might do so so myself. Although I'm not sure a Terminator would have tattoos unless it was trying to blend in, I suppose. Mm. <laughs> Here's Johnny. Bean's got something of a young Nicholson about him, hasn't he? He has, yeah. He was far too underused. What else has he done? What else are his, like, his big roles? Navy Seals. Uh, aliens, obviously. Uh, it's in a film called American Dragons. He was in The Abyss. Uh, you got to say one thing for Cameron. He's very loyal. He's very, very loyal. Paxton, Bean, Schwarzenegger, Weaver. He puts them all back in the movies. Billy Zane. You know, he's really... uh, (laughs) Really loyal. How do you explain Billy Zane? There's just no explanation for him, is there? The thing with Billy Zane is... When he wants to, he can be good. He's in Demon Knight, and he's awesome in Demon Knight. Yeah, I know. Him and William Sadler are great. And then he'll turn up in something absolutely shite. Hey, Michael Bean was in Greece. Was he? Mm. As what? Mike, school athlete. Wow, that was a stretch. Can you imagine the director of Greece going, I've got no time to give you all characters. Just be fucking Mike and a school athlete. Anything else? No, that's it. I was in a film called Time Bomb with Patsy Kensett. Oh, Jesus, really? Mm. How'd she ever have a Hollywood career? Tits. Yeah. Fair enough, really. Yeah. Say no more, say no more. She did have some pretty good tits. Perky is the word I'd say. I think he's fingering her. He's fingering her, isn't he? He's definitely got his finger in there. Yeah. He's he's thinking, is this how I get her pregnant? No. 
your penis has to get erect, my dear boy. And then you have to push it into her and out and in and out. Let me show you how it's done. Out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Linda's like, just, just so you know, I really don't want to be doing this, Michael. <laughs> Linda's like, I, I really don't want you to have sex with me, crazy old British man. <laughs> no, no, I must show Michael Bean how it's done. This, this isn't in my contract. Just shut up. Be quiet. Lay down and spread your bloody legs. <laughs> Let me do this. It's all part of acting. Come on. I can't say you're going to enjoy it. <laughs> I can't stay hard forever. <laughs> Would you spit on it? Go on, just spit on it, just a little bit. Because you're all, you're all tight and everything. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to get it in there. It's going to be like hitting a nail into a piece of steel. Can't you get wet, woman? Bloody hell. <laughs> I know you don't want me to be doing this, but come on, it's called acting. I fucked some of the greats. <laughs> Martha Plimpton, while she was in The Goonies. Uh, who else have I done? I've done uh, Andrea Barber when she was in Escape from New York. I fucked on a black man. <laughs> <laughs> while she was on that sitcom. <laughs> The upper hand. I gave her the upper hand. <laughs> she was pussy galore, you know. Bit of an ironic name because her pussy was almost non existent. Tiny little shriveled up thing. Yes, I fucked Joan Hickson when she was <laughs> making Miss Marple. <laughs> I didn't want to, but it's acting. Yes. I get an actor's check and I cash it because I can fuck on cue. Not forever. <laughs> it doesn't last very long. Oh, come on, spread them. I won't come inside you. I'll do it on his stomach. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I fucked Vanessa Redgrave. <laughs> she was unconscious at the time. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell her about it, she wouldn't know. <laughs> I fucked Madeline Stowe. <laughs> <laughs> but only in the mouth. So I yeah. don't think it counts. I haven't put it on my resume. <laughs> yeah, it's not on my CV. It's not a particular moment I'm proud of. But it got her the job in 12 Monkeys. Yes. I also teabagged Kathy Bates in Literary. <laughs> <laughs> now that I did enjoy. That I did enjoy. <laughs> I stuck my pinky finger up the arsehole of Barbara Hershey. <laughs> Get her the job in beaches. <laughs> While well, giving a particular oral session to Bette Midler. Betty Midler, as I Betty Midler, her. as I call her. I was instrumental in getting that movie made. Yes, and all I... the women who love that movie have got me to thank. Yes, me. as well as my special thanks in the credits of Bitches. I mean Beaches. Me and my relevantly sized cob. <laughs> it's not big, but it gets the job done. Oh, oh it gets it done. And if by getting it done you mean getting it all over your face, then you're right.
wonder which factory, disused factory this bit was made at. Because that was like a staple of the 80s and 90s, wasn't it? Yeah. Let's go and find an old factory that's not being used. This is the bit of Terminator I always forget. Why? Because by this point you're asleep? No. Because it's just, I just can't, can't remember it. Dogs. Well, this is the only bit I remember. The rest of it is a blur. Oh, that and the sex scene. I remember the sex scene. Yeah. Yeah. It's Sarah Connor. It's not Sarah Connor. Shoot her. It'd be better if you just shot her in the face. Oh, are you going to the... Uh, that guy was show? eating... Eating my spoof out of a tin plate. I am going to uh, Urban Action Showcase. Yeah? Is that what you were asking me? Yeah. Yeah. Because I just shared that picture. When's that? November, I think. Cool. I'm hoping it's not that first weekend in November, so I don't miss it. I'm missing so much that first weekend in November by being in England, but I haven't been to England in four years. So. Looking forward to coming back? Yeah, definitely. See, he wouldn't have a picture of her. There wouldn't be a way to... It doesn't make any sense. No. Certainly not a good picture. The tagline of this movie could be walk quietly and carry a big gun. <laughs> that this is a big gun. Yeah. I like to think, although it was made beforehand, that this is James Cameron's answer to Mad Max 3, where he's like, fucking children. Yeah. Shoot them all. And it just blows them all up. It's pretty cool in the mix. Then his eyes got it red. Yeah. What you don't realise is Clint Howard was originally going to be cast in this film. Well, he was going to be uh, Sarah Connor, wasn't he? Yeah. That That's kind of spooky. gives you away, that does, doesn't it? That's kind of spooky. You couldn't do that now, of course, because all of the photos would be digital. Also, why wouldn't <laughs> the photos be digital in the future? Like, he didn't really think about that, did he? Like, the future just looks like the past. Yeah, because he's a hipster. And he, uh, sort of, oh, no, no, I'm still not coming down to say the Lord picture. Oh, that makes sense, yeah. That's why he's wearing, uh, Being's like, dress shoes without any socks on. Being's like, look, um, I hope you don't mind, but while you were passed out, uh, I did put it in your bum hole. Yeah. You won't get pregnant from it. He's still wearing the shit-covered pants, though. Yeah, I can't in some ways not changed them. They must be dead comfy. Yeah. Uh, just reading his lines. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, fuck the maid. <laughs> fuck the maid. <laughs> that is guy. some hair. That, now, this guy was uh, uh, Sexiest Man uh, 1981. Yeah. Yeah. Let himself go a bit. Uh, on, but only a little bit, surprisingly. He was he was very, very close. He was originally going to play the Terminator. Or at least his eyeball. I had sex with him. <laughs> See, he looks fucking awesome, doesn't he, walking down that hallway? Yeah. Dicky Motel, Dicky Motel, come in here for some sex. <laughs> that was the jingle. That was the jingle, yeah. Yeah. It ran on the local uh, cable network. Dicky Motel, Dicky Motel, come and have a sex with a dog. 
much with for the this? dog. Oh, with the dog. You <laughs> let the dog. <laughs> It's just an advert where there's this family and this guy going, You know, Martha, I can't think of something I would rather do than find an Alsatian and fuck it in the ass. Do you think there's any motels that will let me fuck an Alsatian in the ass? But it's funny you should say that, John, but I just found this lovely year advert for the Tiki Motel. Says you can put it in a dog's ass. $15 for half an hour. Or 25 for the full hour. Well, that My sounds God, kind of swell, Martha, Margaret. That sounds marvelous. It was the original plot for Vacation, the movie. <laughs> Instead of going to Wally World, they were going to go to the Tiki Motel and fuck Chris Wall was going to fuck a dog. You know, Russ, when I was your age, I never got to fuck an Alsatian in the ass of the place called the Tiki Motel. <laughs> Johnny Hughes gets called in by the studio. He's like, <laughs> now, John, we've read the script and we're thinking probably Wally World would be more appropriate. <laughs> we read the script and I tell you what, it's funny, but by the time the guys get to uh, the Tiki Motel and then you have this, what seems to be a protracted 10 minute long Alsatian fucking sequence. At that point, I think the script takes a slight turn for the worst, and I'm thinking that maybe we change it to your punching a cartoon moose. What do you say? How about we get everybody's favorite fanny, fun, funny, fanny, fanny, funny, funny, funny fat guy, John Candy, in, <laughs> and you can take him hostage. But well, I, was... I want him to fucking Alsatian. <laughs> well, well, I'm just thinking, John. <laughs> That this is not going to work, buddy. I tell you what, Alsatian fucking, it's not really summer comedy material, I'm telling you. It's more highbrow, late night shit. It's more, you know, your intelligentsia is going to like it. Yeah, it's like this other script we've got about the minge that talks to everybody. <laughs> Curly Sue. <laughs> we, we thought that would be better about a child. Now, now John... This uh, this script you've given us here about the uh, the breakfast gangbang, <laughs> we're thinking like maybe Judd Nelson and Emilio Estevez don't double team Ali Sheedy up against the statue. How about and just go with us, John? <laughs> <laughs> they sit around in the semicircle and talk about life and their problems. Could you could you write us something like that, John? I love the sequence. Look. I'm I'm absolutely in love with the sequence where Paul Gleason takes Molly Ringwald into a cupboard and, and fucks her mouth. I'm in love with it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we'd like you to do a different take on it, of course. Film it, <laughs> and uh, we'll see how it works. I tell you what, you can film the mouth fucking. We'll let you film it. But I tell you what, maybe you try this other thing whereby he's an angry teacher and there are all some kids in detention. <laughs> But I mean, Ferris Bueller's Day <laughs> Off. I like that, but uh, how about instead of him and Cameron go around fucking whores all day, he has a girlfriend and learns something <laughs> about himself. However, the scenes in Pretty in Pink with James Spader don't change a thing. <laughs> Gold. <laughs> James Spader, when uh, he was announced he was going to be in Pretty Pink, was like, well, I only signed up based on all the scripts he'd written about fucking everybody. <laughs> <laughs> now all of a sudden I'm in this movie playing a rich asshole and uh, I don't fuck anybody. It's quite miserable. You should see the original script for Home Alone. Pretty and Pink was... The end. Pretty and Pink was uh, <laughs> meant to be... <laughs> meant to have a sequel called Pretty and Brown. And... Uh, <laughs> The and first James Spader film, was like, I'll be in the sequel. The first film was all going to be about vaginas. It's a lot like a Lars von Trier film <laughs> originally. It was going to be a dissection of the vagina. Well, not a factual dissection, like an in intellectual dissection of the minge in popular culture. And, uh, and then they were going to do a sequel about the asshole. Then, of course, studio heads get involved and everything changes. They think they know best. I'll tell you what, Home Alone, that was going to be a great film. It was going to be about this little child who gets endlessly raped by Joe Pesci. Yeah. The studio said that that was horrible. They said it was a crime. 
and they said that it would be disturbing and unpleasant for people to watch. Then I told them that I was casting Macaulay Culkin, and they said, have at it. <laughs> We'd love to see that little shit abused <laughs> every which way as possible. Yeah, anally. It was all... <laughs> they were very specific. They took me in, they said, John... <sighs> this, this idea you got for Ron Jeremy, Uncle Fuck... <laughs> I Can we it. change it to Uncle Buck? How about we get everybody's favorite fat funny man, John Candy. Are you trying to put John Candy in every one of my movies? <laughs> Listen, the children love John Candy. Have you seen The Great Outdoors, John? <laughs> I, he, he wrote, wrote the did uh, <laughs> The Great Outdoors was originally a script that John Hughes brought us in the late 80s that featured John Candy and Dan Aykroyd on a panty raid through Michigan. <laughs> We thought that maybe we changed that. Uh, there was a lot of scenes where uh, he would be... Go Who's the woman in that again? The famous... Oh. Uh, um, from American Beauty. What's her name? Annette Bening, that's it. Annette Bening. Originally, it was just John Candy nailing the shit out of Annette Bening for five straight hours. <laughs> the great outdoors referred to the fact that they were seldom inside while they were fucking. Yeah. Got this great idea, okay? It's called planes, trains, and automobiles. We got Steve Martin, your favorite John Candy. <laughs> They're trying to get home for Thanksgiving, but they can't, and they end up on planes, trains, and automobiles. Have I'm it. liking what you're saying, John, and they fucking every <laughs> one of them. Now you lost me a little bit, John. <laughs> Wait a minute. What you were describing seemed to be a family Thanksgiving comedy. But now what you're telling me is that really it's a sex fest from start to finish. And Planes, Trains, and Automobiles merely refers to the places where the sex and intercourse would be taking place. Yeah, that's about right. And you want to cast Steve Martin and everyone's <laughs> favorite fat, funny man, John Candy, in the role. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, that's not going to work for us, John. <laughs> How about... <laughs> Then to Hamilton Sex. I like the idea that John Hughes was really an absolute pervert who wrote all these scripts, but the studio kept changing it. Yeah. Can we get uh, somebody into the local look at the script there, John? It's a documentary about John Hughes, and it's like, it's like, despite every film being a greater success than the one before, <laughs> Hughes still tried to get his unique vision in front of the Hollywood bigwigs. In his, in his excellent movie, Weird Science, he came close to getting the kind of sexual extremism he wanted on screen. Two young boys in a shower with Kelly, <laughs> Kelly LeBrock. That was the closest he ever got to filming the great fuck scenes that he wanted to and imagined graphically in his scripts. Get behind the scenes, it's what I said. He's a director, he is. Put it in now, Anthony. <laughs> hey, that's my wife. Steven Seagal supervised the uh, intercourse on that set. Yeah. By supervising, I mean he sat behind a door, looked through a little crack in the wood and masturbated furiously into a tin yeah. cup. I wish this was a glory hole. Spot hamburgers. All that's true story, though. Yeah. Yeah. John Hughes, filthy fucker. The only Perth shot that, the only shot that remains from the original cut of the Breakfast Club gangbang was the shot up Molly Ringwald's legs where you see her vagina through her panties. Yeah. And Jud Nelson at the end walking away raising his hand. <laughs> that I was, did it. <laughs> that was only so he could dry his fist off from all the juices. <laughs> He put raises it and then what well, he just cuts before he goes, Guess where this has been? Judd Nelson had to wear a glove at the end because his hand was so fucked up, having had to penetrate with his fist over forty vaginas. I'm and what get was Judd quite Nelson to wear a glove. It was Why? to promote safe fisting. It was possibly one of the most grotesque scenes I'd ever seen put on film. 
it started off and you were like, wow, all five fingers are really going in that vagina. And the first vagina was okay. You watched it, you were like, nah, it's probably painful, but she seems to be enjoying it. Let's go with it. However, by the 40th vagina, I was being physically sick. I've learned that you can watch one vagina being fisted for a moderate amount of time. Two vaginas, maybe. But 40 vaginas, that's just too much fisting. But it took the wonderful humanitarian of John Hughes to teach me that lesson. A lesson great, which I will take to my grave. And I will take it to my grave. You've seen the uncut shot of Caligula. <laughs> well, the Breakfast Club was originally worse than that. <laughs> John Hughes would creep onto the set of the <laughs> Breakfast Club late at night and film hardcore scenes between <laughs> Paul Gleason, Judd Nelson, and Molly Ringwald. Being part of the Actors' Union, they weren't too happy about it, but they did it. As John Hughes said, if you don't do it, you'll never work in this fucking town again. I remember one night I was on the Paramount lot, and John Hughes, high to his tits on eight <laughs> balls of coke, came walking through... Dick hanging out of the zipper at the front of his <laughs> jeans. The severed head of a marmot in one hand and a big can of lubricating jelly in the other. I said, having fun, are you, John? He was like, I'm just putting the finishing touches to 16 candles. What a guy. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy. You would get out. See, that's some damn good special effects for the time, isn't it? It is. I remember Harry Dean Stanton taking me aside on the set of Sixteen Candles and saying, why are there so many dildos? <laughs> when I thought this was just a simple film about a young girl's coming-of-age party. That's the thing about Harry. He was always asking questions. We didn't like it. Yeah. But he it. asked them. He asked them all the time. What Harry hadn't realized was that he had signed up for more than he had bargained for with John Hughes. <laughs> oh, what's he saying there? Ferris Bueller's Day Off, the Sausage Queen of Chicago, Sausage King of Chicago. Yeah. That was John Hughes. Yeah, it was. Everybody Why? talks you about like John. sausages? No. I like putting cocks on screen. Everybody. T <laughs> Everybody talked about John Hughes in glowing terms as a wonderful, mild mannered, soft spoken humanitarian with. Uh, with wonderful intentions towards the human race and a very loving family man. The John Hughes people don't talk about is the man who had more violent and aggressive Asian pornography than any other human alive. His, that's the John I knew. That's the John I knew and loved intimately. Nineteen eighty. These Vietnamese death camp fuck tapes were, quite honestly, some of the most graphically disturbing things I'd ever seen. You know that sequence in Home Alone when he sets fire to the top of Joe Pesci's head? I'm just going to tell you, that idea came from one of his fuck tapes. <laughs> his life was changed. Uh, you know, he did like teenage comedy. But in 1981, after a tit wank by Sam Fox, he became a different man, a sexual man. The thing is, he'd grown up during the Korean War, and then he'd seen the <laughs> Vietnam War really take off, and he just never understood why, even as a young boy during the Vietnam War, seeing that footage come back, why he was always erect. And... Um, <laughs> He pleaded all through the 80s with uh, the President Ronald Reagan 
to see if he could again go to war with Asia just so that John Hughes could get it up. Yeah. Instead, he spent his vast fortune buying up filthy, filthy Asian fuck tapes from all around the world. I mean, he had, he had quite the collection. Quite the collection. When he died, they had to burn it all in case it be discovered. But well, some still it. remain. And do you know who bought them all? Max von Sydow. True story. <laughs> That'd be the greatest Hollywood story ever. It is. Yes, I, I fucking love the Korean fuck tapes. Now, was this probably the best special effects of the time? Well, I mean, this or the never-ending story, really... That's that's what you're looking at, isn't it? Yeah, but for the budget. Oh yeah, no, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, this or Robocop. Yeah, just like stop motion, wasn't it? Yeah. I would just pull the plug out, rip out its batteries or whatever it's running on. Yeah, it's probably only a couple of Duracell. That's why it moves so slowly. Should have gone Energizer. Spray water on him, he'd rust. Arnold Schwarzenegger's lost a bit of weight. Great if he still had a huge cock. See, that's the only place, really, where you can tell that it's a bit fake. Well, it's not, it's all fake. Unless they're, do you think they're hiring a real robot? Yeah. Was there a real robot working at this time? Now it'd just be Doug Jones. Or Andy Serkis. Running round in his black leotard with green spots all over him. Back then, producer Robert Evans, who was a big Hollywood powerhouse, used to employ robots at his vast Beverly Hills Mansion. To pleasure the guests, <laughs> whether they wanted it or not. Uh, you're at my party. You if would I go say into, you get wanked off by a robot, you get banked off by a robot. You would go into Robert Evans's house. You would be greeted by someone who looked a bit like C-3PO. <laughs> and he would ask you quite a reasonable whether you wanted boy or girl, young or old. There was quite a selection as well. Different colours, different weights, different heights, different amount of tits. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger had a specific robot built for him with three boobs. He still has it to this day. Miranda, her name is. <laughs> she could give two men tit wanks at the same time. It was breathtaking to watch. It was great for ironing out Hollywood deals. You Frank want to Sinatra see? used to visit. <laughs> Interestingly enough, Frank Sinatra visited one night to Robert Evans's robot fuckhouse and asked, could he get a Sammy Davis Jr. robot? <laughs> Took out the glass eye and went to town on it like a fucking animal. I got pictures, but the video was destroyed. Robert Evans apparently got the idea from John Hughes. <laughs> John Hughes. I was thinking of doing a remake of Westworld. Good idea, John. Could you make that into a teenage comedy? How about they just fuck the robots? I 
I've got James Spader to play the robot. And I've got Jamie Gertz from The Lost Boys to play the cowgirl. I like to think that this partially inspired, like, Ultron at the beginning of Avengers Age of Ultron when he's kind of, like, stumbling about. And he's just that, like, proto-robot before he becomes all big and shiny. I don't know, I've not seen it. Oh, you haven't seen it? No. Probably for the best, it was shit. <laughs> you have to wear it. James Spader was the best thing in it. Did he have a huge erect robot cock? No, which is... I mean, yes, but they had to CGI it out. That James Spader will be all over that, won't he? Yeah. Don't, leg wound. Don't touch it, my dear. Let me come over there and fuck your leg. Yeah. Pull it out and I'll put it in. After all that, you think it'd be dead, wouldn't you? Yeah. What you don't see, though, is that its hand goes on a fingering raid throughout yeah. the greater Los Angeles area. Two blocks down, a robot hand fingered me in the ass. I think he's dead. alive it's because you should also always destroy the brain of anything mm. shoot us in the brain Like a sex pest from the future, in it. Yeah, turns me on. Yeah. So I can lay about from the future. See, really, what you should do if it had any brains, you'd go out in the front of it and press the thing and crush air. Yeah, but it doesn't have legs, it can't run or anything. No, it can't run, but it can crawl. Good job Bella Emberg weren't playing, him, playing Sarah Connor. She never got through there. It's weird, cos she was cast, but they filmed this scene... <laughs> she got stuck. They filmed this scene on the second day, and, yeah, they just, uh Bella... It's not going to work. See, I just wouldn't know how... Like, I wouldn't know which button made it work. I would just be like... I would have to look at instructions and... Yeah. She's lucky that day in Electricator, isn't it, isn't she? Well, it's a good job it doesn't send her to the future. <laughs> this is amazing, the future. I've got his new boyfriend called John Connor. You what? I'd keep that. Yeah. Be worth a fortune now. Everyone loves this movie. <laughs> Either that, or at a kid's parties, you could stick it up your sleeve and pretend it was your real arm. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any family for this? No. OK, we'll just take it for the dogs. I like his hair.
Do you know we've been exactly in time the whole movie? Yeah. Yeah. We've been exactly in time the whole movie. It's been perfect. Because I can hear your movie a little bit in the background. Oh, can you hear that, sir? This was a shit record. She tried to release this as a record. Do you remember that? Yeah, she's trying to do it on the fly. This is one of our podcasts. Yeah, L- Linda Hamilton sings the blues from a Jeep in the desert. Just, <laughs> just never took off. It's because she's turned fucking deaf. Yeah, what, what happened to a fucking scooter that she had? Well, she sold it. Upgraded. Her friend left her a lifetime supply of Johnny's, and uh, <laughs> she's working her way through the Arizona desert fucking yeah, gas she... station attendant. <laughs> she, went... <laughs> she went back to the Tiki Motel for that Alsatian nut. Yeah. Because he was so good. That's the father of <laughs> Tom Connor's father. She did go back, look, for the Alsatian. Yeah, I told you. That's yeah. hilarious. I just wanted to tell you, John, your dog's an Alsatian. He's really good at all. Look at his tongue. See, that gas station, look, has piñatas <laughs> hanging up. Yeah, I think you there. should just, just sell sell the candy like you would regularly, but no, there you have to beat the hell out of a yeah. brightly coloured donkey before you can buy your M&M's. You want Mars bar, you hit the donkey. Hit the donkey <laughs> with the stick. I said stick, no, not your dick. Did he just say, I took this one of your pussy, senor? <laughs> show me your pussy. I get better picture. Go so on, show us, <laughs> show us some leg, Hamilton. It'd be hilarious if this old guy was played by James Mason or something. Yeah. Hello, it's James Mason doing yeah. the part of the Mexican gas station attendant. <laughs> Behold he says my... he wants ten dollars for your photo, <laughs> you cunt. Behold, behold my Mexican accent. It's so very good. Yeah. I was Just... in Lolita. <laughs> Show us your tits, Hamilton. Oh, James. There's a storm on its way. And now we found out where the photo was taken. Yes. I'd probably drive the other way. That yeah. looks terrible weather. That looks like New Mexico. New Mexico looks like that. Yeah. Uh, New Mexico has shitty weather, uh, uh, like in pockets, so that you see like a storm off to the left, sun off to the right, and then like another storm out to the other end. And yeah, it's crazy. Harlan Ellison, of course, uh, this movie dedicated to him because uh, he died shortly while uh, well just before they were finished making it actually um, underneath uh, three very large women underneath the mango tree yeah Shay Austin um, he now fucks ferrets in Reno for change uh, Tommy Estridge uh, interesting enough he left the movie business for good started up a, a stream of uh, uh, bubble bath motels uh, <laughs> where you go in and it, you don't, there's not a bed you just sleep in, in, in bubbles uh, I've been to one I've been to one yeah he, yeah, f- he films you um, <laughs> and uh, and sometimes holds you against your will especially yeah, if but, you have a nice wife and daughter yeah but whatever it's, it's how you make business work you got to yeah Ken okay. Fritz, uh, he strangles polecats in um, in Benidorm now. Goes down a hit there with the children. Oh, they love it. Peter Tothpal, uh, he's a three-time uh, winner of the... Um, Nobel New- Peace Prize. The New- <laughs> well, actually, the Nobel Length Prize mm. for his amazing length. Uh so good he won it three times. Yeah. Uh, Gary rode her back. He, um, he's well known in um, cowboy circles. 
enough said about that, the better. Uh, <laughs> Stephen Fagerquist. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's one of my, yeah, <clears throat> he's one of my favourite. He holds the the world record for most amount of wasps in a penis. <laughs> Quite and disgusting. they said it couldn't be done. It's quite disgusting to watch him wedge wasps down the tip of his penis with a toothpick. But uh, 637 wasps he got in his penis. And not one sting. No. Nope. Died later that year, though. <laughs> Car crash. Yeah. <laughs> the wasps escaped. <laughs> While he was driving on the 405. Now, Birds and Animals Unlimited, they were shut down because they ran out of Birds and Animals. Yeah. They weren't as unlimited as they thought. Yeah. It was a fairly big, broad claim to make in the first place. One day I'll show them. Yeah. Now, Horace Manazanares, he, of course, went on to build... Uh, the world's largest collection of backskin collected from uh, <laughs> prisoners, like well known prisoners. Like his biggest uh, was uh, he's got some dry skin that he f- scraped off the back of Charles Manson. Oh, yeah. After a yeah. television interview in 1975. And he keeps that in a jar and he travels, it's interesting, he travels colleges, high schools. He's made quite a career out of yeah, it. Yeah, so he's got the back skin of Henry VIII, which is the oldest back skin that he has. Yeah. Uh, well, that's what he claims. Anyway, I think it's pretty well preserved considering it's from Henry VIII. But, uh, yeah, it kind of throws into question the, uh, the validity, validity of, of it. it. But, but yeah. you, can, you can tell that it's him because uh, it's got on the back of it where each one of his wives um, tattooed their name. Yeah. Yeah, because he was a bit of a tattooist, wasn't he? Henry he liked to tattoo, yeah. Yeah, he loved it, loved it. When he when he died, they found that around his penis, um, it was uh, it was I'm the king. Yeah. Or hail to the king, or something like that. Around hail his, to the king and suck penis. it. Yeah, and suck it. on his butter, there yeah, was a yeah. tattoo of Bugs Bunny. Tattoo of Bugs so, Bunny right there on his ass. Which is amazing, because Bugs Bunny hadn't even been created. Hadn't but even he had, been created, but he had it there. Yeah, he had the foreshadow to forethought to get one done. It's got Cary Grant's back skin. Uh, <laughs> and that, what's interesting about that, it's, it's almost his entire back, because Cary Grant used to be peeled quite like a snake. Like he used to lose an entire <laughs> layer of skin all at once, almost. Yes, he did, yeah. Because uh, Cary Grant was part reptile. And, um, and so he was able to get some of the Grant sheddage... And uh, he has it on a coat hanger in his closet. Yeah. He likes to freak women out when he brings them home. Yeah. I said that, boy, you have my skin in your cupboard. I'd love to be able to talk like Cary Grant. But true stories, true Hollywood stories. We learned a lot about Hollywood, this, this commentary, I thought. Yes, I think so. People don't know that we have all this information, but trust me, I've got endless stories about the uh, filth and debauchery that went on in Hollywood back in the good old days. And there was plenty of filth. Plenty of it. Oh. Uh, plenty of it. But uh, that's been a real pleasure, sir. Thank you so much for doing it. It's good to be back. Here. It is good to be back. What should we do next? Uh, let's, I'll tell you what. Let's, uh, let's ask the listeners what they'd like to hear. Right. And then go against it. Yeah, let's go, let's go the, entirely the opposite. So, listeners... Uh, you can either comment on our Facebook page or our Facebook group or write to us at dractionkickass at gmail.com and tell us which commentary you would like to hear us do next. Can't guarantee we'll do it. No. But it would be nice to hear from you. Yeah, and I don't want to hear behind the candelabra. People don't seem to understand we're an action <laughs> uh, commentary podcast. Um, the life, life and Times of Liberace, while fascinating... Um, are not are not what we're interested in here on the show. I'll tell you what I would like to hear about, and this will, if there's any other film, not action, what what would you like to do a commentary on? Well, if we, we, we broke away from the action mold for one show. Yeah, any film. Not comedy, because you can't go against comedy. 
be it serious, be it horror, be it anything, as long as it's not a comedy. I would, I would really like to do. There's a a, a documentary about concentration camps uh, <laughs> called The Sorrow and the Pity. I'd really like to do that. The four-hour documentary on Nazis. I think we could make it quite entertaining. Yeah. I think a lot of that has been exaggerated. (laughs) That propaganda against Hitler. Terrible. Especially when Hitler invented the marshmallow and gave us so much joy. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd like to know what you'd like us to... If you could hear us do one commentary, not action, what would it be? Not to say we're going to do it. Just just, ask, just asking a question. Maybe you'd like to hear us do Mark Commode's favourite film of all time, The Exorcist. Do you know, you? Uh, Mark Commode can go fuck himself, we all know that, but... Um... <laughs> Because he's a cunt, a solid gold one. Um, but he did a top five Tom Cruise performances and didn't include one single action cruise film. What did he pick? Uh, Magnolia. Yeah. Uh, Born on the 4th of July. Yeah. Rain Man. Yeah. I mean, just all the predictable ones. All the predictable ones. Uh, oh, Risky Business. Yeah. And Jerry Maguire. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't pick any of those. No. 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 None of those would be on my list at all. Jack Reacher, Ethan Hunt, um, Edge of Tomorrow. It's fucking awesome. Um, Uh, Tropic Thunder. Yeah, he's awesome in that. And legend. Um, okay. Yeah, legend. <laughs> Top Gun. Top Top Gun. Uh, collateral. Collateral. He's very good in Collateral. Yes. He's awesome in Collateral. Shame about Jamie Fox. Yeah. Yeah, but shame you don't kill him at the end, isn't it? But yes, yeah, so that was our commentary for The Terminator. Write in and say what we should do next. Please, please, please write in. Yes, I'd love to hear from you. Oh, yeah, send my love to Alan and... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> He'll be with you next week. Yeah, I've got to go feed my Korean child. Yeah, say hello from me. Yeah, I've got some uh, wild boar um, meat sticks here, so I'm, I'm going to give him that. Barbecue flavored jerky. <laughs> That's what it says here. <laughs> we'll go and feed him that then. It's the only meat you can uh, bend. That's, <laughs> it's what I, I think about it. <laughs> Jerky's a very bendable meat. Mine's not. No. Uh, all right, sir. Uh, have a good right. night.